Well, you guys have done it. This is turning into a Monster Hunter channel. Frick, I'm gonna have to turn this mug into a Monster Hunter mug, aren't I? Hey, <laughs> Hunts. To my viewership that doesn't play Monster Hunter, what are you doing? Why aren't you playing this amazing game? Or so that's apparently what I'm gonna sound like. In all seriousness, there is going to be non-Monster Hunter content on this channel, but there's going to be probably a weekly Monster Hunter video in the style of this journal entry. So as I mentioned in my last Monster Hunter video, I'm going to be documenting my entire journey as a hunter through Monster Hunter World. And assuming I fall in love with this franchise and good things happen, maybe we'll go and do more stuff. But before we get started, I am now two days away from diving into Monster Hunter World for the first time. And I want to kind of set the stage of where my expectations are. So it's been about a couple days since the last video came out. I've gotten a lot of feedback from the community. Thank you so much to everyone, by the way. I've gotten a lot of support and you guys have given me a lot of excitement because now I found out a lot of you are excited to see me go on my Monster Hunter journey, which makes me more excited. And this is what I'm going into this franchise now. This, this is this is journal entry zero. These are the expectations that I'm going in. So let's start off with the ground rules. I hear all of you, there is this amazing defender armor and we're gonna go all in and we're gonna use that. No, I'm just kidding. So this defender armor, which apparently was added in to, to speed through Monster Hunter World to get to Iceborne, I think it's called. I will not be using that because the goal here is to experience Monster Hunter, give it a fair chance and experience as it was designed to be. So I'm not going to use the, I think it's called Defender. The Defender Armor, or the Guardian Armor and the Defender Weapons, I think that's what it's called. Not using those. Um, I've also spent some time checking out, and I really hope I don't bastardize his name, Eric, Eric's channel. Um, sorry, Gaijin Hunter. I've only watched Ark's videos so far. Uh, and he had a good kind of overview of all the different, the 14 weapons. I really like how he broke it down. So I think he had light, heavy, and technical, if I recall correctly. What I'm feeling, look at those. And on my first stream this Thursday, you guys are going to see, I'm probably going to spend the first hour beating on a stump, I'm told, to experiment with the weapons. Um, but what I'm seeing from his video and from my playstyle is I'm really gravitating to the sword and shield because it seems very user friendly, uh, beginner friendly. I like the fact that I can consume items without sheathing. That's a big plus to me as someone who has a lot to learn. Um, the long sword looks attractive because he put it in the light uh, category, but to me it looked very sluggish. And I'm like, all right, if I master this, this seems to be like, this is considered light. And to me, that looks very technical. And if I pull off combos and land my hits with that thing, I think I will be satisfied with that. So I might try longsword for a bit, uh, experiment. And um, in the heavy, I really don't think I, I want to touch heavy weapons just because one of my big complaints from the, the whole thing that launched me on this Monster Hunter journey was that the game felt sluggish. So I'm not going to go out of my way to make it even more sluggish with heavy weapons. Though I have to say the great swords. If I have to try any of them, I think the great sword is the most tempting because if I can get around to swinging that massive thing and killing a monster, I think that's like instant, what do you, what do you call that thing? The instant dopamine right there. And then there's the technical weapons, which look really cool, which I understand I think are Ark's favorite weapons, but those look so unappealing to me as a noob. Like there, there's some crazy stuff going on there, like the insect glaive. Um, the, the one that turns into an ax and stuff. I want to eventually play that, but because it's my first, let's, let's stay in on the bunny hill and only touch the, the small, easy weapons. So most likely sword and shield. I'm going to try long sword. I'm going to try great sword. Um, melee, no, sorry. The, the ranged weapons, honestly, they look appealing to me because it looks easy, but that doesn't look rewarding. I don't want to be kiting monsters from afar and just landing shots on them. I want to get in on these monsters. I want to get in their faces and I want to mess them up. So we're probably going to stick to a melee weapon. Um, with all of that in mind, my mindset going into this, because I've tried the demo, I've tried a Wii game, but the fact that all of you, like most of you have said, that is the natural progression. You don't like the game until you like the game, which is weird to me. Why did you guys ever play this if you didn't like it at first? Just weird. So my mindset going into this is I'm not going to like it right away. 
And I know that I'm not gonna like it because I have a lot to learn. And I understand that there's learning, uh, a whole learning curve. So I'm going into the stream. There's all of you that's gonna be there that's, that's gonna support. And that's gonna be really encouraging and thrilling to talk and discover things with all of you. Um, but I know that the gameplay is gonna have a learning curve for me. I have to adapt to it. So day one, it's gonna be, let's figure out the combos, let's figure out my weapons. And maybe then let's go out, let's try to kill a few monsters. And I expect fully I'm gonna die. Um, another question that came up a lot in the comments from the last video was, am I gonna do Iceborne? Am I gonna do the DLC? And just because I am so green to this franchise, I'm only going to commit to Monster Hunter World the, and, and getting to rolling the credits. My hope is that I will have a change of heart and that I will actually enjoy this series because I see all of you loving it. I'm like, I want to love that too. I want to love it like that. I want to love that just like that. So assuming we have a good successful arc, I will probably go into the um, additionally, whatever the post game stuff, and I will probably want to get Iceborne and I will probably get into Monster Hunter Rise. And this is how you guys take over my life be honest another another question is uh, another thing that came up is people said if you only play four hours a week you're not gonna be able you're not gonna get good like it's gonna take you forever you're not gonna get into it and I hear you I've played Hollow Knight and I remember I was playing it once a week to platinum grind and I would forget a lot of like the mechanics to fight a boss one week later let's I only wanted to commit to once a week because I'm going into so much unknown if this is really developing into something good I might increase the streams to two, twice a week to maybe even three times a week max so that's on the table and that could happen uh, another question that came up is I know a lot of you are on the other side of the world and the schedule from 8 p.m. to 12 or 11 to 12 so from 8 p.m. and I'm only doing three to four hours that might not work I will be downloading and uploading all of the streams to this YouTube channel as an unlisted video. There will be links probably in all of these journals to get you to that playlist if you're interested in watching uh, when you're actually awake and not asleep. Also the video on demand is also, the VODs are available on Twitch if you ever want to watch them there. But after that 30 day period they're gone so now they come, they're going to be uh, held here on YouTube if you guys care to watch that. Another question that came up is what platform am I playing this on? So I'll be playing this on Steam and I will be playing on a controller because I'm not a big fan of mouse and keyboard and I just love the feeling of a controller. So we're going to be playing with an Xbox uh, Elite controller. And um, other questions were uh, a lot of you asking if you could help me out and if you could join me on this journey, like actually play with me in the game. I don't know how this game works, um, so I can't answer that. And it seems like there might be quite a few of you Short answer is yes, I am open to playing with all of you. However, we can organize that. And if you guys have ideas on how to organize that, please let me know. Um, but also on the flip side, I do not want to be carried. So if you do, if we do end up playing together, just, you know, don't come in with some OP armor and weapons and carry me through the game because the goal here is to really experience the whole thing. And so whatever makes sense for that to play together and still get the, the Monster Hunter experience, um, that's all good. Now, I ran out of notes and there was still something I want to cover. Oh, the production. So another thing is this entire thing. I, I like to kind of uh, theme my streams and stuff and I have a little bit of a production background. So I want to see like, how can we do some, some more fun stuff with this journey? So one thing I'm gonna be adding to the stream is we're gonna have some counters. Uh, actually, I don't think I, hang on, did I have the notes up? I do have the notes up. So a few things just for fun. We're going to count how many monsters I've slayed throughout this journey. We're only counting the big monsters, not the not the, not the the garbage stuff. Uh, we're going to be counting how many monsters captured. And this was all recommended to me by the community. We're going to be counting how many failed quests I have. That's going to be a high count. We're going to be counting how many times I've forgotten to eat. Apparently eating is important in this game. I don't know. Um, how many times I've fainted and apparently the handler is really cringy or something. So I think we're counting how many cringe moments the handler has. So all these things we're going to be counting. Uh, that's just going to be another element of fun. I've gotten some really unique emotes for the stream. I don't know if I can put them up now, but uh, these were uh, commissioned by a member of the community and we're going to have those emotes available during the streams. There's a few other surprises. I've worked on some stuff that you guys are going to see when we stream on Thursday. But overall, going into this, I'm excited. I don't know what to expect on Thursday, but I think we're gonna have a lot of fun together. And I'm just so excited to get this journey started. And uh, if you're kind of new to this, 
This is gonna be a journal entry as we progress from noob to hunter. And I'm just gonna document my whole way to Monster Hunter through Monster Hunter World. And if you don't care about any of that, I'm still gonna be reviewing non-Monster Hunter stuff on this channel. So welcome along for the ride. Glad to have you all here. We're, uh, we're off to a great start in 2021 and uh, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. So I'll see you Thursday night, 8 p.m. on twitch.tv slash heyjofficial. And until then, keep it classy. Lesson number one, don't kick the yellow toad. What is this thing? This thing's cute. Can I kill it? Paratoad. Well, that doesn't look good. Oh, no. Heyji hunts. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter journal where I document my entire journey playthrough through Monster Hunter World. If you're here for the ride and you're gonna follow along, be sure to subscribe, hit those notifications because I'm dropping these videos pretty much whenever I make progress in this series, whether it is during a stream or during my own research. So last night we kicked off my Monster Hunter World journey and I'm just blown away by what happened. I'm recording this within 24 hours of that stream happening. My expect, okay, my usual streams are five to 10 viewers. I was expecting maybe 50 to 100 considering the last few Monster Hunter videos have been getting some attention. There were 600 of you mad lads watching this idiot pretty much figure out how to play Monster Hunter World. 600 of you. And it was just insane. And now I try to keep these journals slash diaries short. I try to keep them to 10 minutes. I doubt that's gonna happen today because I just, I just drank out of the fire hose so much information. Not only was there Monster Hunter World that was throwing everything at me, I had 600 amazing people throwing in some of you trolls, but good trolls, I like that kind of trolling, um, passing, just sending me info. And then there was the whole Twitch thing. I've never had to deal with a massive Twitch channel thing like that. So just a quick shout out to all my mods who were in the channel helping me figure out what was going on, getting community feedback, and making sure that we have a better stream next time. So let's get started. I got my notes. Um, I just have to say, yeah, we had 600 viewers. We had so much crazy stuff in the chat. I know there was a few bugs with some of the mechanics, the alerts. I'm gonna fix all that. There was, a, I didn't even know what a hype train was. We hit level five hype train on Twitch. What is that? How do you even start a hype train? I don't know, but we went to level five. I think that's good. Um, it's, it's a lot, but I'm just gonna, start off before I get into my thoughts of what happened last night. It was a positive experience. I had a good time. What what the hell is this? I didn't think I'd enjoy Monster Hunter uh, this fast in. If you watched the last journal, I was very skeptical. I was getting really ready for some frustration and for anger. There was none of that. It was just a very nice, pleasant ride so far. I'm not going to jinx it. Um, I guess I'm just going to go in the order of my notes here. The first thing is, wow, a lot of information. Uh, like I said, the game was throwing a lot of stuff at me. Um, I wasn't necessarily in a headspace to absorb it all calmly because I had a very active community um, by my side. And I also wanted to make sure we were getting to the good stuff. So I missed a lot of information that the game was throwing at me. But even if I was playing alone, honestly, I'm not the type of person to sit and stew on that kind of information. I'm the kind to just go out, figure it out as I go. Um, if I was playing this alone, it would have been very intimidating and I would have ignored a lot of it anyways. So the fact that I had a community um, that kept reiterating kind of the important parts, saying, hey, go to options, change this, it's gonna make your life easier. So like, um, I was suggested to change the thing where I can always see my health bar at all times, uh, removing that dynamic thing where it disappears, that's a good change. Being able to see my silhouette behind a monster, those are good changes. So all, I think all of the important stuff was communicated to me by the, by, um, the community, which helped me get through a little bit of all this information that the game was throwing at me. There's still a lot in there that I don't know. There's a lot of resource stuff, but I read all your comments on this channel. I, I try to follow along in Discord, which that also blew up. Um, so if you're looking for a Discord for Monster Hunter things, there's gonna be uh, for Monster Hunter community. Um, I've kind of rejigged the whole Discord to support that. So if you wanna join a community, links down in the description along with a bunch of other good stuff, including if you wanna watch the stream, the full four hour stream, uh, the whole unlisted playlist is going to be saved here on YouTube and uh, you'll always find that link down below. So um, lots of information, but I'll get there eventually. Uh, the goal is not to absorb it all at once. The second, the, the first thing I noticed getting into this game was there, there was a lot more world building than I was expecting. 
Uh, when I dabbled in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, I think it was called, um, they just kind of like threw you in a camp with like a very kind of generic boring character and they're just like, go hunt, go figure it out. Um, here, you know, there were there was cutscenes. You're like this new character that you get to, to. I don't know if you could design your character before. I would assume so, but it doesn't stand out. Uh, you make your own character, and then you know you're you're being greeted in a first person view, and and feels like I belong to something. And I'm on a ship, and everything feels cool, like the aesthetics. And then there's like this massive dinosaur thing. I don't know what it is. It came out of the water, and then like we're already on like an epic uh, adventure of like scaling this big thing, and then flying out like whoa what is going on here we're like chasing some elder dragons or something uh and then there's like kind of a lively like world in this camp all of this is making me want to learn more about this world and be a part of it so the world building is just so much better the character creation i would say was probably my first wall um the amount of customization that you can do here is insane and I never really spend too much time in, in character um, creation, so I tried to like design myself to the best that I could. I probably could have done a better job, but it's good enough. And then I made my, I think it's called a Palico, uh, the cat. So we named the cat Classy, and um, by the end of the stream, he ended up with a mustache. And I love, I love my cat. My cat is adorable, he is the best cat, and he is the classiest cat, and he will be my best friend forever. Um, the cat was harder to design than the human because I cared more about the cat, but I am very happy with how he turned out. So next, uh, I dived into the weapon trials and I trialed all the weapons. I think I spent about 40 or so minutes playing around with the weapons. By the end of it, I went with sword and shield because there wasn't all these extra meters and things to uh, worry about. And as someone who has to learn just how to move in this game and how to do attacks, that one was very inviting to me because I didn't have to worry about consumables and all that. All I have to deal with is sharpening my sword, and I'm getting the hang of that. So sheathing, unsheathing, attacking, and sharpening. And like, that's good right now. Let's get comfortable with that. Um, tried the great sword. Man, that thing feels really good to like swing around. Oh, it's so big. It's so big. So big. But I do not want to bring that into battle yet until I get more comfortable with the general sense of what I'm doing with this game. Um, the dual blades felt very, very fast, and it feels a lot more like those action-y games I usually play. And I'm hesitant to, to play those because uh, it's so fast, I feel it's not going to give me a good sense for what the rest of the game is. Like, I do want to expand my... I'm already like... I'm getting sucked in guys. I can feel myself getting pulled into this franchise and it is scary, it is terrifying. I just see a big black hole of monsters. So I don't want to uh, go in with the experience I have and lean into dual swords. I'd rather go in with a little bit more of a balanced one which is sword and shield so that I can lean more, I can like move more towards the, the bigger weapons more naturally than trying to go from dual blades to the heavy weapons. Uh, long sword, if you watched the last journal, was one I was leaning towards. I really didn't like how it felt, so that one's on the back burner for now until I understand how to do more stuff with it. Tried the hammer, saw a lot of you hammer brothers out there. The the basic bunk, very unsatisfying. The the like swing up and big bunk, very satisfying. That's it's fun to, to move that around. Uh hunting horn, you guys are weird. I'm never gonna be a hunting horn user, sorry. We've got the lance, uh, which is very not my stand the ground type. I did not like much of the lance. The gun lance was cool because it's just a cool weapon. I mean, it's a lance with a gun in it. Um, so it's cool, but just not my play style. So lance, gun lance, they're at the bottom of the list. Now, these next two, the switch axe and the charge blade, these things are sexy. I loved the switch axe. I just love the idea of you're swinging this thing. It's big, but it's not great sort big. And then you can like just switch it up into a, a slower or, fast or faster mode. And you just chain that and you just feel like such a badass. These weapons are my goal. This is what I want to play. I want to be either a switch axe or a charge blade user. Um, I think I was putting more time into the charge blade and I was understanding the whole, okay, you have to like fight with your, your sword your sword and shield, 
and then it charges these vials and then you like load up your vials into your shield or something and then when it's charged you like combine it into an axe and then you just like unleash some damage that stuff is cool and we're gonna get there that's my goal we're gonna transition probably to the charge blade and the switch axe one of the two or both um but i need to get my foundations down first and then the insect blade i really like the jump and the flying but again let's learn to walk before we learn to fly um so it's cool, but I, I'm not there yet. And then we have the bow, light bow, uh, the bow, the light bow gun, and the heavy bow gun. I, I knew I didn't really want to do range. The range felt good in training, but it feels more like a shooting, like it felt like a third person shooter in some senses. And I'm not here for that experience. Like I said, I want to get up in their faces. I want to slash them up. We're going to stick with the melees. Um, so right now, I'm just working on learning the combos of sword and shield and then i want to eventually graduate to switch axe charge blade and then we'll see we'll see what i'm like after that um so after that we went to the hunts and uh i, I managed to hunt three months three monsters yesterday so i did the great jagras i did the kula yaku and we we did Enjanith, i think that's how you pronounce it for funsies um yeah he destroyed me so great jagras was a very nice friendly like noob uh monster basically he gets fat he charges at you you roll out of the way you wail on him he charges that it's just really dodge the charge and wail on him and it was very satisfying and i have to say like in general fighting the monster is i think we all agree what the best part is like that is exciting and when like the monster is dead i was actually when i was in bed last night i'm like i wish i had more monsters to fight like that is that is the, the meat and potatoes of this game was just being in there and, and wailing on these monsters. Um, but not, yeah, so the Grey Jagras, we killed him and then I got to make my own armor out of his skin and that felt good. And I guess people were calling me like a fashion, uh, a fashion hunter. I don't care, I wanna look good. I'm not gonna like max and min my stats. I've never been that kind of player. I wanna look good and look like a badass. That's what I'm doing. Cow the. So the, by the time we got to the Kula, Kula Yaku, which is like a raptor thing that really likes this pot, um, I was really trying to figure out how to do combos. And I think I pulled off a really good one with the sword and shield. So I, with the first boss, I, it was mostly just hack slash. But then people, the community was telling me, okay, now you want to do like YY back B, which gives you that charge that you can then jump into the monster and then it launches you into the air and then you can like either bash with your shield or your sword down onto the monster and I, I even got like on top of it and I was riding it and I was like hitting in the head and I'm like oh it's only doing like one damage but then like I found out I could jump to the back and I can like stab it in the side and that was doing a lot more damage that was exciting I think everyone was pretty excited to see that um so now that I'm like okay we've got we've got basic hack and slash now I can jump I want to know like okay what's next is I I know sword and shield has a high skill ceiling from what I'm told. I want to get to that. I want to learn what I can do here. So I'm going to keep exploring that. Uh, and then eventually we're going to go to the more advanced weapons. Uh, Anjanith, um, I've learned that Anjanith, very, very weird pronunciation. I learned that roaring can freeze you. So that's not good. I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for a lot of things. His tail attacks you, his mouth attacks you, his foot attacks you, everything attacks you. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna. I, mean, I don't know how I'm gonna fight that thing. How I'm gonna kill it? Like I am such a baby right now. It's hard to imagine how I'm going to close that skill gap to be able to take down that monster. Uh, but I'm here for it. Next up, we have the upgrades. Um, I I really wasn't able to pay too much attention to what is the best stuff to do. The community was like, ah, just kind of do whatever. So I really followed mostly the community's uh, direction there, and. Um, so far, I'm turning out pretty good. So, this game is really gonna define. It's really defining my year. This game is my my outlook to this franchise is coming around. And yesterday, four hours. Usually, when I stream by the three hour mark, I'm getting tired and I'm kind of winding down. I didn't even notice four hours went by. And this is like looking at a game, looking at a Twitch chat, and like just absorbing all that. Um, I was blown away that four hours just went by like that. I was blown away. I was having so much fun. And there's, it's it's a beautiful world. The music is so damn good in this franchise, in this game. I can't say franchise because I haven't played the other games. And um, I'm leaning, so some of you were, were saying, am I going to get into Iceborne? I mean, I'm only two monsters in. 
I have not hit my first difficulty wall yet. So I'm not going to say anything more, but I do want, I know that a lot of people like in Europe, you guys want to tune in live stream. So I'm going to look at doing probably a Saturday or a Sunday stream in the day for me so that the, uh, anyone in Europe can tune in live. We're going to do that probably in a week from now. So the next stream is going to be next Thursday. But like I said, I'm going to try to make more streams now that I know uh, I am enjoying it. It's not a punishment. Um, and we, I have to figure out my schedule. So I can't commit to anything more than that for now. And uh, yeah, let's just get to the credits and we'll see how it goes. But that's where I stand after day one in Monster Hunter, after four hours. What a shift it's been already. And there's so much more to look forward to. So if you're coming along for the journey, I mean, this is a community effort. This is not just one guy figuring out how to play it. This is one guy taking in a lot of information from a community and trying to put it into practice. So I welcome you to join uh, either of these journals on a week-to-week -week basis, join me in the stream, or come into our Discord, meet other hunters, and let's just make an awesome community, have fun with this. And if you've made it this far and you've only been here for Monster Hunter, I'm also doing other things on this channel. I've done a whole Castlevania journey, which I welcome you to join. And uh, I'm actually getting close to finishing up the whole Castlevania franchise journey. So that's ending this year. And then we're going to do other journeys as well. Um, and I do other game reviews and demo reviews. So check that out. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next Monster Hunter journal. Uh, also, if you want to watch the whole stream uh, and you don't want to use Twitch or whatever, it's gone on Twitch by the time you see this. Description below, you will find all of the Monster Hunter um, world playthroughs in an unlisted playlist that you can watch and share and do whatever you want with it. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next Monster Hunter Journal, and until then, keep it classy. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Smug Toad. Thought you had a good electrifying me. Oh, here we go. Okay, it goes. Look at that face. You're coming home with me. And you know what? I'm not a cruel person. We're going to get him a friend. Whoop! Hiji Hunts. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter journal. I have a confession to make. I know I said I wouldn't stream until Thursday again, but the itch got me and I was like, I'm just going to load up the game and just go through the menus. And while I'm doing this, I might as well stream it. And so this was on Saturday and this was entirely just a stream about me going through menus. You're watching a man just go through menus. And you guys were excited for that. There was a lot of people that showed up. I know not as many as last Thursday because it was unscheduled, but a lot of people showed up and a lot of people were excited for menus. You guys just keep blowing my mind all the time. This community is just incredible so far. I'm having a good time. I hope you guys are having a good time too. So I really didn't think a little stream to kind of get myself familiar with everything that was thrown at me on Thursday would actually warrant another journal entry, but turns out I learned a lot and there was a lot that happened that didn't progress the story at all. It just progressed my understanding of the series, which warrants another journal. So here we are. So as I mentioned in my last journal, on my first stream between the, the Twitch chat and the game, there was a lot to process. And I just want to go back and just like move around the world, just get a sense of where everything is in the, in the hub world, uh, specifically in the village whatever it's called, and then just look at the menus. Just like sit there, look at them and understand where everything is so that everything could be a little bit more intuitive when I'm actually doing the, the Thursday streams and progressing. So the first thing I learned, uh, I went back to Poogie and you know, I got that down. Now I know how to pet Poogie, the exclamation mark goes up. But I also learned there was all these other things that you could do with Poogie that I hadn't realized. Uh, you could rename the, the pig, you can rename the Poogie. So we named Poogie Crassy. Um, and then I learned that if you hold the Poogie and walk around, your controller will vibrate and you can find a treasure. And actually I was surprised because uh, a lot of people in the chat actually apparently didn't know that, maybe not a lot, a few people in the chat didn't know. So we were all learning something at, at that point. And you can even change the color of your Poogie. So many customizations in this game, it's kind of crazy. Um, outside of that, I also learned through the chat, the chat kind of helped me, we, we fixed the camera lock thing so that's done um i learned to manage my item pouch so i actually opened the item pouch and i was like all right people are like you gotta clean this out so we got rid of all the ammo i know I'm, i don't need to we got rid of all the mushrooms the files everything i don't need we sent that to the box and we had a nice organized pouch so this is something i really appreciate having and i know how to manage my my inventory a little bit better before future hunts the next thing 
I learned was I opened up the hunter's notes and this was really cool. I really love this aspect because I learned that the more I'm in the world, um, like picking up drools and poo, drool and poo and footprints. Um, and then you talk to this old dude, he fills up your journal and gives you tips and it actually like, I know you guys all know this, but I'm just sharing what I'm learning. Um, it, it tells you how to like attack the monster. The more you research the monster in the world, the more you have notes on how to defeat it, they'll say like, this is weak. This is a vulnerable point. It's weak to this element. Uh, this is where you harvest all the different items. So like that, first of all, I love it. I love collecting things to unlock things. Oh no, I'm using the word love and monster hunter together. It's happening. Um, it's just, I want to fill up this book. I want to unlock everything. So we're going to collect all the poo, all, all the snot, all the gross bits, and we're going to learn everything we can about these monsters. So I learned that. I really love that. And now I know that when I come back from my hunts, I go talk to the old man in case I learn stuff. The hub town, I actually got a sense of where everything is. So now I'm not completely lost. I, I know that pretty much when I come back from my towns, I go redeem my quests. I go redeem my research. And then... I go talk to wherever I need the quest giver, go to the smithy, go to the cook, and off we go. I got the whole circuit down now. And I, I found the farm. We have not unlocked the farm, but I know that there's a farm that unlocks eventually. I know where that is now. Um, the next thing that we spent a lot of time in is I went for an expedition, and I did not fight any new monsters. That was my rule. The rule is we do not progress. We do not try new monsters. Uh, so I went as an expedition just to kind of explore the first area that I was in, get a sense of how do I get around this forest? What What is everything that I'm picking up? And of course, getting a revenge on that smug boy, the yellow toad. So uh, I was collecting pets. I was shooting down mosquitoes. I learned that you can do like mosquito armor. Um, I was learning about like flora, just observing how the monsters are out in the world and how they interact. Just, just taking the world in and collecting everything like I'm a rabid Pokemon hunter. Just just grabbing everything I can, throwing my net at stuff. I love that net. I love catching things with that net and mining and picking up mushrooms. Honestly, it was just a stream about gathering. It's all that Animal Crossing playtime has finally come to use to me here. Um, while we were doing that, I met a vet. This, honestly, I wish I could have saved it for Thursday. So I was like harvesting my mushrooms or something. And then I was hearing like some moaning in the bush. And I turn around and it's like these two cow dinosaurs which i think they were like flirting with each other and things were escalating so like i went to like check out what's going on and then i'm just hearing like flap flap i was like that sounds extremely dangerous what is that flapping is it that t that furry t-rex that's getting close why would it be flapping and i see like a shadow just cover me and i'm like what is going on what is going on and then i look up and there's a freaking dragon in the air above me i think his name is Rath, Rathalos or something? The iconic monster that everybody knows that I still can't pronounce. This thing's flying above, grabs one of these horny, like, dinosaur cows, and just, like, I'm, I book it out of there. I have, I don't think I've been that scared in a game in a long time. And I don't really emote that well, so you guys probably didn't see if you watched the stream. But I got, like, shivers throughout my whole body because I thought that was such a surprise. That was my first encounter with this thing. I didn't even know it was in that, that part of the world. What is that? What is that? What is that noise? What is that? What? What? I'm not touching that. Rathalos? This guy just shows up in here? Yeah, we're not. We're not. Man, that gave me goosebumps. We're gonna hunt that eventually? Jeez. And from that point on, I learned this thing is flying around. Uh, just kind of hanging out. We did not get attacked by it thank god i went and hid in the bush as fast as i could but then the freaking chat they're like oh go climb the tree just just go climb the tree there's something nice out there of course like you know doubt suspicion chat was very sus at this point can he attack me or does he just chill but i climbed the tree and i found out rathalos's nest is up there these guys led me right to the nest i picked up an egg i broke the egg luckily rathalos left the map before any damage could be done but Trolley chat, I got my eye on you. I know what you guys are up to. 
Uh, we also got to play, I, I discovered there was a guild card, so in the menus I saw the guild card, customized that, had fun doing that, so many options in there. Um, I learned about the research points and how you can collect those by doing the quests, the investigation, the bounties. So I got more of a sense of what to do there and I'm just loading up on that. So with that in mind, should I do that? No, we got one, a few more things. Went through the armor, found, finally like understood what the armors are, the different sets, how to build out your skill tree, how you can go back in the skill tree and then you can like branch off into other things so, like my bone armor can go into the great Jagras and so on. All of it was very helpful so that I'm not so clueless the next time I go into um, a stream to try to progress and advance. And I think this one, some of you are going to be like, oh, why'd you do this on a weekend stream? But I tried out the switch axe because I was like, let's see if I can take down the great Jagras or a, a great Jagras with the switch axe. Turns out the switch axe was a lot easier to play with than I thought. So now I'm not sure if I'm going to keep going Switch Axe or if I'm going to go Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield, I have to admit, I don't really make use of the shield very much. I'm focused a lot on the offense and dodging, so block is like a whole other thing I might not really be interested in doing, whereas Switch Axe, it's more about just being on the offense and switching, morphing your sword and your axe. So I think I'm going to stick to Switch Axe for a little bit longer because you're doing way more damage. It feels good and it just feels kind of natural. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play between these two for now. And that's pretty much everything that happened in that stream. If you, again, if you wanna watch it, I always upload it here on YouTube. So it's in the unlisted playlist, which I link in the description below. Um, but this was just crazy to me that even something as mundane as walking around in the wilderness and just looking at menus and just processing it would bring so much excitement to the whole community and it was just really fun. Uh, going forward, this made me realize understanding this part of the game. I think on Thursdays, what we're going to do, Thursdays 8 p.m. Eastern time, I'm still going to do progression. We're going to try to get to the next monster, kill the next monster, move the story forward. Those are going to be the Thursday streams. Nothing changes there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add, now that I've looked at my schedule, they're going to be spontaneous streams on Saturdays or Sundays. Uh, they're going to be in my afternoon as early as maybe 10 a.m. even in my mornings, Eastern Time. And this is going to be really for the weekend cr crew, the European audience, anyone who can't catch me on Thursday. And the only thing we're going to do on weekend streams is just grind. I'm going to fight enemies I've already fought before. I'm going to go out and harvest things. Eventually, as I get more comfortable, I'm going to be doing community um, hangouts. Like we're going to play as a community on weekends. Uh, and that's what we're going to do until I figure out my schedule some more. So Thursdays are progression streams, um, whereas Saturday, Sunday are going to be just general streams. And those don't have a time. So just put your alerts on Twitch, I guess, uh, to be notified if you want to check those out. Otherwise, this game keeps pulling me in. I mean, at this point, I don't think I can even fake disliking it or not being interested. You guys are seeing what's happening. I, we can't deny it anymore. Um, it's fun. I can't wait till I can take on Rathalos and see what that's like. I'm scared shitless to take him on right now. That's not going to happen. He's, he's scared. He legit scared me. I got scared in a video game. That hasn't happened, I think, ever. So that happened. Last time was maybe in Hollow Knight when I got into the deepness. Yes, Hollow Knight deepness, but Rathalos, scarier. Uh, all right. So, yeah, if you want to check all of that, description below. Join the Discord if you haven't already. We got a cool community there. Otherwise, I'll see you on Thursday, 8 p.m. twitch.tv slash heyjofficial for the next stream. And then we're going to follow that up with another journal. So I'll see you then. And until then, keep it classy. Something's happening and I think it's good. All right. I think I did the thing that I was supposed to do. Oh, right in the face. I think I made it puke something. Get down. Is all this red good? Oh, something else is happening. I think he bit me. I'm not sure what happened there. Did he bite me at the end? The terror of the woods is no more. My innocence gone. I sit before you, no longer a noob, but a hunter for the Anjanath has been slain. There we go! Oh, we did it! Oh! Hedgehunts!
All right, before we get into this journal, I have to ask, is there such thing as a monster hunter hangover? Because I went on five hunts in the last stream, five like new monster hunts. And the next day I felt so groggy. I, I swear to you, I felt like I had a hangover. It, I just couldn't focus on anything. I didn't sleep well. I had like a dry mouth. It was not pleasant. So I don't know if there's such thing as too much monster hunter, but I might have done it. So the last stream, we focused a lot on making progress by killing monsters. And of course, we finally got our revenge and our, our rematch with Anjanath, which sit down because I've got so much excitement to share with you. That was a fight that I will remember for the rest of my life. But first, let's talk about the other monsters that came before that, starting with Puke Puke, which I know that's not, it's like Puke Puke. Oh, I get it because he pukes. Um, first fight was that I was a little bit worried because now this you know the other two were were fairly straightforward now I knew we were adding the element of poison to this fight and I was a little bit nervous um luckily I had the antidotes I got uh, the radio menu set up with antidotes everyone helped me to like there, there was two types of antidotes that I needed to set up uh but otherwise the fight went pretty good also throughout all of these fights so the last stream I went full on switch axe uh it felt good when I did the grind stream last week and now I just really wanted to uh, focus on getting much better with that weapon and fighting monsters with the Switch Axe. So I did all of that with that and it worked out pretty good. The Switch Axe is good. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Um, so the Puke Puke fight was pretty good except for the poison. It was a fairly easy monster. It was pretty much just like move to the side, avoid when it vomits everywhere. We got its tail down. Uh, overall, very natural progression fight compared to the Great Jagras and the for lack of a better name. I'm just going to call him the what up bird because I don't remember his name. I just remember chat always going, what up bird, what up bird? I think they just say what up. I forget what it goes. So we're going to call it what up bird. The armor set of the Puke Puke, I think is one of my favorites so far at that point. It, it has like a little bit of a samurai like type armor uh, feel to it, which I love. So the Puke, Puke armor at that point, I really wanted to just get that whole set. But we don't grind on Thursdays, we go to the next monster, which leads us to, what was the, oh, before we went to the next monster, I got to discover the best kind of quest, which is actually the worst kind of quest. I don't know if Capcom has a little bit of humor in their game, but the best kind of quest has you following this cart that's getting pushed through a whole new environment, which that's exciting. We've unlocked a new environment to explore. I haven't explored it yet. Uh, walking with the handler and the scientist pushing this cart, was not fun. I was just boring. I ran into a not a Rathalos. I think it's like a female Rathalos. It looked like a Rathalos, but it was not red. Uh, and I was supposed to like distract it with rocks and I accidentally hit it with a rock, which freaked me out because then it got enraged and was like breathing fire at me and making loud noises. I'm just like, wagon, get out of here. Uh, and then we just like booked it out of the cave and everything was good. Then there was a Cactuar which surprised me because Cactuar's, you know, I played a lot of Final Fantasy games. Cactuar is a Square Enix property. What is a Cactuar doing in a Capcom game? It was so mind boggling. I'm like, what is that doing here? And then everyone was like, kick it, kick it, which I'm sure means something bad's gonna happen if I kick it. We were on a mission to do something. Anyways, I think I was in the middle of the fight with the Baroth, so I did not end up kicking it, but I promise you all the next time I see a Cactuar, we're gonna kick it. I found a mini Cactuar. We caught that. It's now our pet. It's my favorite in the room. It moves around everywhere. It's fun. Don't pet it. It will prick you. Uh, the Baroth fight was really interesting. Uh, also known as the, I guess, the like Choo Choo fight. Pretty straightforward. Uh, he pretty much just like rams towards you, dodge, keep hacking away at his sides when he like kind of leans back and goes into the ground and is about to like headbutt the ground. Just get out of the way. He's slow enough and he projects his, his movements enough. This was a fairly easy fight. I love the, f the fact that you can like chip away at his mud armor. Um, this one really didn't stress me out too much. It feels a lot like fights I've seen in other games. Uh, because there's so much projection, I'm like, okay, he's just gonna come and ram at me. I think he hit me a few times just from me being not that experienced. But uh, otherwise, fairly straightforward. That was a fun fight. I enjoyed it. I think that was probably one of my favorite fights at that point. Now the armor looks a little weird. The armor is like a pumpkin rook. It literally looks like a chess piece painted orange. I don't like it. 
it's very unique, it's very cool, but I'm never going to wear this. So as much as I like to fight the Baroth, we're probably not going to be using that armor anytime soon. Uh, Story-wise, in this chapter, I also got to meet a guy from the First Fleet, which it just goes to show you how much fun the hunts are, because anytime I get like lore at this point, I don't even absorb it. I can't even tell you what this guy uh, told me and what the whole lore is about, because I was just still on a rush from killing a Baroth, and this guy was kind of like moody and bringing down the whole like mood in the room, and I'm just like, okay, why are you being so moody? Why am I talking to you? Why are you being this lone wolf? Just come back to camp and let's hunt some monsters together. Like, what are you doing here? So, uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to care about the story by the end of this, because I'm already... Like, if you remember on the first... Uh, when I first started playing, I was like, oh, cool, there's a lot of lore here. Uh, I'm excited. And I have to tell you, I've, ever since, like, the Great Jagras, I don't really care too much about the lore, so... Maybe we're just going to keep killing monsters. I think that's, that's the real hook of the game now, isn't it? Uh, next up, we met the first monster that I absolutely despised fighting. I don't know how to pronounce this. It's called, like, the... Oh, man. Jai... Jairu? J oh, I really don't know how to do this. Jairu Totus? Something like... It's the big fish monster. It's basically the Baroth if you put it in water. And what a garbage fight. I really don't like it because you're like slothing through mud. It's swimming around. It's jumping out at you. It has that whole mud mechanic where you can like break parts off the mud armor off of it. And as much as I hate it, I, I know why it's in the game. I can tell from a design perspective, I'm no game designer, but I can tell that this fight is there to teach new players, oh, you better know how to, like you better not just be hacking and slashing your way through this game because this fight requires a lot more precision. It intentionally slows you down so that you are less likely to uh, dodge out of, out of the way through sheer luck. And so the, the fight makes sense in the progression of teaching the player how to play, but it's a really not fun fight because you are just not moving fast. The, the character is underground most of the time. It's just really not interesting. Anyways, we killed him. And the good side is his armor actually looks pretty cool. It's got, uh, well, you guys are seeing it on screen. It just looks cool. I mean, look at that. I don't have to describe why I think armor looks cool. So as much as I want that armor, I really don't want to fight this guy again. So I don't know if we're going to get this. But now, let, oh, no, wait, we're not Anjanath yet. Anjanath yet. We have Toby, which is, I think, what you all refer as the flying squirrel. So we went and did Toby. Uh, what a beautiful monster like just like a, a nice white blue electrifying monster and now we went from like really slow fight to really fast fight and he was beautiful his armor set let's show up the armor set the armor set is beautiful like just fantastic armor but this fight was quite difficult <laughs> it was uh it was a lot faster pace than i would have liked i was playing with a you know the switch axe which was a lot slower of a weapon and I got electrocuted enough, so now we're also learning about how to dealing with status effects on us as the player. So I got electrocuted so much. I can't say as a player, I walked away from that fight knowing how to avoid being electrocuted. I definitely learned how to use the berries that removes that thing only to be electrocuted immediately after. So I don't think I grasped what that fight was trying to teach me. I just have to say it's a beautiful monster, a beautiful armor. I'm probably going to have to fight it again simply because there's a lot to learn there that I did not learn on the first time. And it's it's just such a fast-paced fight. I don't know if I want to maybe try doing that again with the sword and shield, which is a little bit faster, and see how, how it is with a faster weapon. Oh no, here it is. It's happening. I'm now thinking how to approach monsters again with different weapons strategy. That's how you go down the hole. That's how you go down this black hole because now not only are we are we looking at killing all the monsters, now we're looking at how to optimize monster killing. Ugh. All right. And then the highlight of the stream. So if you were not there, I was about two and a half hours, three hours into the stream. I have to admit, I was actually starting to get tired. We just killed four monsters at this point. I'm like, oh, do, do I like keep playing? Do I do grind streams? That seems really like boring. And the chat, we just started getting like some donations and, and the hype train started. I was like, oh no, not another hype train. I was just hearing like hype, 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 
hype, hype. And I was like, ah, no, we got, we got to do something. We got to like play into this hype train. So I'm like, all right, are we doing Anjanath? Like, are we going back and, and going to fight this thing that destroyed us last week? And then that got everybody on board the hype train. And we got this hype train to level five again. And I was like, do it, Anjanath. So I'm like, all right, we're going to go in. We're going to like, the hype train boosts me up. It's like my own hunter buff. I'm like, we're going to go back and we're going to spank this dinosaur. So everyone's like, oh, he's going to die right away. Other people, ha the other half of the chat was like, okay, you got you to get like all these things lined up to be ready. We need like to buff up our armor. We got to get these skills. So I'm like going through the menus. 10 minutes have gone by. My hype levels are dropping. I was like, screw it. I'm not going to prepare for this fight. I'm just going to get drained. We got the hype train. I got the energy. Let's just go in with how we are. Let's see how much I've progressed as a hunter since last week. We're going in. So I went in with my great Jagras sword and whatever you see in the video that I'm wearing not no research i'm like i just know how to move better now let's see what happens we go into the engine of fight and in the first opening like that adrenaline was working so well because i'm just like dodging all his attacks and just like smashing into him and he's about to like attack me and i just like wind up the sword and just smack his face and he falls to the ground and i'm just whipping him with the sword it felt like i was masterfully like it probably looked like garbage but it felt like i was masterfully um fighting it but I was on edge the whole time like I was getting hit and I was like getting back up and then like doing like a last minute dodge and smacking him back down and the fight was kind of like pretty evenly matched and the whole chat was like also going crazy that they were tense and stuff and then it like runs away um all of this just kept escalating and getting crazy and just feeding back into my adrenaline and then it starts limping and I'm like oh my god we got Anjanath to limp we're making progress and everyone's going crazy uh and then there's a point where like I, I knocked it down somehow and uh, you know the cutscene of that fight shows that you can bring the boulders down and knock them and I wanted to do that from the beginning I was like how do I do that and at the point where he fell somehow I knocked him down I realized he fell right beneath the boulders like oh my god that, now's my chance how do I do this so I went and grabbed like the thing and I slingshot and the boulders fell on him and did like 100 plus damage I'm like mind blown that I did it I mounted him a few times right after I like sliced off his tail like I was just owning this Anjanath and it felt so powerful like difficulty wall where are you at I was flying high I was getting very cocky it goes back to its nest and I'm like all right we're gonna finish this fight I'm just like I'm gonna like have beaten Anjanath on my first go uh, everyone's gonna talk about this I'm so good and then he like wakes up smack smack kills me just faints like the, the biggest deepest no out of my core soul escape because I thought I would have to redo all of that over again I didn't realize when they say you can have up to three faints, it means you have up to three tries. Um, so the first thing I'm just like, oh no, like I have to refight this thing. The last 20 minutes was all a waste. I got to redo that again. That's what it feels like playing Castlevania, by the way. So, and then the whole chat's like, no, 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 you got two more faints. You got two more faints. Get, get back up. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like running out of camp. They're like, no, no, go back. You got to eat. You got to eat. You got to do all that. I'm like, oh my God, so many things to do. And they're like, hurry up. He's healing. And I'm just like, woof, so much pressure. Uh, so anyways, I ate. I buffed up. I got all my potions back. We go back into that nest. We start swinging on him. Bang, bang. He knocks me down again very quick. And I'm just like, what is going on? It wasn't until after the stream I realized in that nest, you're like on a trampoline. And basically when he's moving or something, he can stun you. So I was getting stunned, but I didn't realize that was happening. And that's why he was getting the best of me. And it's a really like tight, cramped area to fight in. So he was destroying me. So now now the pressure was up because i was on my last faint he was so close to dying i had died so fast on that second one and now like the chat's just like all right go defensive stop being greedy like i was being greedy at this point i just want to finish the fight because i'm like oh i'm so close so i go and he's sleeping and i'm like all right here's where we talk about my switch axe training before doing this fight somewhere in the middle of the stream i went back to the pole the pole and i we had a nice time together I took out the switch axe and we trained and the and the, the community taught me this cool combo where you like um you spam b and then you convert into your sword and it's like this five six hit combo i'm like we're gonna open up with that on the sleeping t-rex this time and so i did that and then he died and i won and it, it felt good and just that whole rush and the whole chat exploded with craziness and it was the four hour mark right at the end of the stream like there was no better way to end the stream i don't know if i can top that fight you guys are probably laughing because you're like yeah there's all these other fights this was just the first one uh and then of course we went back i saw the armor and i was like oh that is a really nice armor i want anjanath all over me because that is my most iconic fight to this point 
And so actually that's what we're doing this weekend. Um, we're actually gonna try to grind, farm out the Anjanath armor with the community. And this is the first time I'm trying community hunts. So uh, it could probably be the biggest mess ever. There was a lot of people um, watching on Thursday. We had 700 viewers this time. We broke 700 and coordinating that into a functional logistical uh, stream with multiplayer. It's gonna be, it's gonna, it's not gonna be good, but we're gonna try. And the next journal is probably gonna be focusing on uh, the experience of multiplayer and what that's like and all of that and whatever we do in the farming. But man, that was a very emotional stream. As you can see, I am fully in this time. I really thought Anjanath was gonna be the first wall to discourage me, but it only made me stronger. It just makes me want more of it. So now I guess we're heading out to fight our first elder dragon. The, the stage is set where we're getting like this elder dragon thing that we saw at the beginning ensnared in a trap. And we're going to be doing that after the grind stream this Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash heyjofficial. You want to check out. We're going in and we're taking out. I think we're taking out the first elder dragon. We're going to go play with it. I don't know what we're going to do with it. And uh, I'm also going to learn how to capture and ensnare or just capture and maybe use traps. So we'll see how all that works. Because, yeah, apparently you need traps for Anjanath. I didn't use traps. I just went as a noob and whacked on him. Oh man, what a ride, what a ride. And we're only we're only two like major streams into this thing. I'm about 10 hours into my Monster Hunter journey now and lots of emotions, let me just tell you that. Hopefully I see you on the next one. If you wanna watch the whole VOD, as always, it's in the description below. You can watch all of the Twitch streams here on YouTube. They're uploaded as unlisted VODs. You can check those out. And I might do a little quick compilation of the Anjanath fight. I'm looking over it, seeing if it makes sense to do like a really quick fight for you guys. That might show up here as well. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next Monster Hunter Journal. And until then, keep it classy. And so there I was, two almost fully naked buff men standing in front of me, arm wrestling for my honor. Monster Hunter multiplayer gets really weird. Zook, come on. No. Oh, yes. You did, you did all right, you did all right. Hey, hunts. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter journal where I document my entire journey through Monster Hunter world as a player who's never really played Monster Hunter. If you like that kind of stuff, be sure to subscribe and like the video and maybe share it with a friend or two. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the latest experience, which is multiplayer. Uh, so if you are not familiar, every Thursday I stream uh, about four hours of my playthrough of Monster Hunter world where we progress through um, the, the story and the monsters that we kill in the game. And then on weekends, we do a grind stream. So last time we completed Anjanath, and this weekend was our first attempt at uh, pretty much grinding the Anjanath armor set. I did not want to do that alone after the stress that was Anjanath. So we brought in some friends. We opened up the stream to uh, be multiplayer. Now, that was a whole logistical feat in and of itself when you're talking about hundreds of viewers, and you can only play with three at a time. But we did it. Shout out to the mod, shout out to the community for being patient and getting over the hurdle of our first multiplayer journey. And what uh, what an interesting experience it is. I absolutely love the little social gimmicks, not really gimmicks, little social features that they have. The fact that you can actually arm wrestle, as I mentioned earlier, uh, was fun. I won once, I lost twice, so I got to really step up my, my arm wrestling game. I got drunk by myself and then I talked to the wrong lady and things uh, things didn't go so well. So I, I landed completely like on my back because I drank so much. Um, that was fun. Classy was ashamed of me. He did not. He was going to disown me right then and there. I don't think I've ever brought so much shame to my cat. I felt a little bad. So we might hold off on the drinking for a little while. It was really cool seeing everyone's cosmetics. So for the sake of multiplayer, the rules were you can have any fun cosmetics. I think those are the rules. The mods kind of enforce them. Uh, or you have to wear Anjanath armor or less. Uh, anything I had been before. So just kind of seeing, like I saw a Moogle in there. I saw some really cool uh, Palico costumes. You know, I know they're called Palicos. We're going to call them cats. Like it's, it's just so much cuter to say cats. Saw a lot of naked people. Mostly saw naked people. Uh, but there's some very interesting... Uh, gear that I saw, some cosmetics that make me want to just get to that part of the game so I can start being stylish and showing off and flexing and putting in my gestures and I can be social with everyone else. So as an outsider, I always thought Monster Hunter was a failed MMO. Like I always saw the game 
and heard that it was always better to play it itself, uh, play it with others, I mean. And I could see the MMO elements, but I was like, why, why is it like on consoles and why is it work as a single player game? Should it be played as a single player game? Should it be played as a multiplayer game? And the answer is really it's both. Personally, I think I prefer playing it as single player specifically when it comes to hunting and uh, doing my first monsters. I like doing that alone. Uh, but when it comes to time to grind and just have some fun, that part is quite fun with multiplayer. It's really completely different. It brings so much more like uniqueness and life to the game. Um, that was fun. So I did quite a bit with the multiplayer journey and we're gonna talk about some of the things I did. Uh, the first thing that I have to say is I, I killed so many Anjanaths I think we're gonna get that species extinct. So of course the goal was to grind out the armor. Uh, we got the whole armor set. We got the switch axe of Anjanath. We got everything. There was even an event quest which had two Anjanaths. So we could double the Anjanath, double the fun. I've killed him so many times. All that fear I had from him on Thursday, gone. Now that said, you know, I was wailing on this guy with three other people. So maybe I was skewed a little bit. But honestly, he did not feel that dangerous. I felt like I, I had seen his attacks so many times at this point. I could just kind of dodge. My attacks weren't always kind of the best execution, but I didn't feel threatened like I did on Thursday. So that was progress. Stuff got crazy too. At one point, there were two Anjanaths fighting the four hunters and then a Rathalos came in. So there was a Rathalos, two Anjanaths, three like experienced monsters. And I'm just in the back with my sword. And I'm just like, Oh, what do I do? Who do I attack? And it was madness and chaos and I was so scared. We did not kill the Rathalos. We held the hunters on our code of not progressing and killing new things on weekend streams. We did we did break its tail though. So I harvested a little bit of Rathalos tail, but we did not kill Rathalos. Uh, I also went back and saw a whole bunch of different ways to kind of fight uh, different creatures. I saw other hunters use kind of like these bomb barrels on a sleeping Anjanath and uh, then we can like trigger that and blow it up. We got to capture a lot. So before we got into the multiplayer madness, I uh, did a capture quest. So I learned how to capture, went against that. What's it called? What's it called? I don't want to get it wrong again. Bird up. That's the meme. Bird up. Uh, we went against our, our whatever his name is. And uh, what a what a difference uh, me as a player how much i've experienced i felt in total control of that fight i was able to position myself grab a rock i'd be like boom throw a rock at his rock make him drop his rock uh, i just felt like i controlled that fight entirely i'm still not quite natural when it comes to trapping like i tried to trap my own anjanath during a fight and i put the trap in the wrong place and it was a complete waste so I still need to practice capturing uh, monsters on my own a little bit more to get the hang of it. Um, we got our first failed quest. So there was quite a few firsts. Unfortunately, one of the quests was to, uh, I think it was, it's called the Baroth. We were supposed to capture it. We got a little, we got a little excited and we, we killed it. So that was a failed quest. And that's why you now see a one on the failed quest counter. I blame it to overly eager hunters. I saw... Uh, we went back and we fought Toby a few times and I saw like the hunters were just so coordinated and using like all these sleep bombs and like I guess this is how you like attack him. So Toby was asleep half the time. It made for a really boring fight, but a very effective fight. I think we killed him in like three minutes and I was like, oh, oh, this is what it looks like when you know what you're doing in this game. I see. Um, as far as I know, all the hunters were rank low rank gear, so I don't think it was a, a rank thing, I th uh, a rank a gear a high level rank gear that made the fights quick i think it was just the fact that all these hunters have killed these monsters probably hundreds of times they know what they're doing and i was just kind of wailing in the back kind of doing my own thing uh lastly i figured i'd take the chance to play with a bunch of different weapons kind of on the go so i went back with the hammer because we needed to break anjanath's face to get some of the parts from his face and i had some fun with the hammer where am i where's my hammer crew at man this hammer I underestimated the power of the bunk because when you're actually running and charging with the hammer, it feels quick. I have to say like my whole perspective in this game has really changed where I feel everything moves a lot quicker. Like you guys remember 
two weeks ago, I was like, this game is clunky. Everything is clunky. Now I'm like, oh, everything is so smooth. Why is, why is it moving so fast? And it's not the game. It's the player. It's the perception. And I know this is what you guys say. He's getting it. He's clicking. This is what happens. The player levels up, not the hunter. It's a really cool experience. And I'm, I'm kind of really happy I'm documenting this. So the hammer was fun. I love charging it and just like spinning it. And then there's one where you're like flipping the air and you just bash Anjanath's face with it. Hammer felt good. It's it's not it, it's one I want to use sparingly. I don't want to main with the hammer, but when when we need some bonks, I'm really happy to pull out a hammer and bonk the night away. Uh, the insect glaive we tried at one point that was a total mess. I did not study up on how to use the insect glaive and this whole thing about an insect and the fact that you have to use buffs. Uh, what I did like was I was like flying in the air all the time when I was actually buffed properly, but otherwise I did not know what I was doing. That's a that's a weapon I need a little bit more time to get the learning curve up. We went brave and we went back with the iconic greatsword knowing it was slow. And that happened to be the fight where there was the two Anjanaths and the Rathalos. And at one point, I think I pulled off a really cool combo because the whole chat went like, oh, he did it, he did it. And it felt good and it looked good. Like I charged it up and I like smack, swing, flip, smack, and like just so much damage on Rathalos. And I was like, okay, this is fun. Again, I, would, I don't think I would main the greatsword, but pulling it out, from time to time just to have fun with like these really like slow blows and I was also getting the hang of like you swing you roll and then you sheathe like I was finding a way to make it kind of smooth so I could make the greatsword work the dual blades did what the dual blades do again they don't bring me satisfaction they are fast I think I want to get yeah I went against a Toby with it and uh, they do what they do, you know, you just, you just on everything. I'm not a big fan of that play style, so I don't think I'll be doing too much dual blades. And then I went back, we got the sword and shield, brought back my old, my, my first love, the sword and shield. And I think we went against a Toby or it was Anjanath with the sword and shield. And it felt, it felt so fast, but also it felt so less special than my switch axe the switch axe is still the one right now if i have to rank with the weapons i played the switch axe i love because it has that morphing thing halfway through and that thing just like just scratches a special itch and then the hammer i think the hammer has really like gained a lot of popularity points this weekend the bonk the bonks are where it's at hammers in second place sword and shield is in third place now sorry sword and shield you are losing some love but you will always have been my first love. And the rest are kind of just everywhere else. I didn't really play any of the other ones. Uh, so that was my experience. Overall was good. The community was fantastic. Everyone was pretty good to kind of like listen to the rules. Uh, everyone was kind of letting me lead at first. No, we, we had a hunting horn out one time. Oh, I also learned about the whole like, you can actually hit your teammates to launch them up in the air. And I realized like at one point I was in the air, I'm like, what happens if I like hit this button? Oh, I can actually like attack from the air. So I can just now start thinking of how crazy like the combos of a coordinated team, like where you probably have voice chat, you're like, all right, launch me up and then you can do stuff. Those fights must be really cool to pull off. Um, so that's still in the distance, that, that sort of like athlet, uh, athletic like hunt um i'm just excited that i really got to kind of familiarize myself oh and just the fact that we did so many hunts at this time it's turning into clockwork where i'm like yep quest eat box uh item box let's go i know my way around the village everything is starting to like feel very fluid it feels very at home so now we can actually focus on okay like a lot of the times now i'm not really focusing on the controls uh, of the basic controls it's really how is this monster moving and how can I make this fight a spectacle? Like, how can I make this look cool? And I'm doing that while still trying to figure out how to do all the combos and stuff. So that was my first experience with multiplayer. It's been pretty good so far. We have a lot to improve on when it comes to multiplayer on our Twitch streams. Uh, the mods and I are working on that. I can't guarantee you when we're gonna have it smooth. It's a process. We're gonna get there. It's gonna improve. Uh, we're going to be doing these multiplayer grind streams spontaneously on weekends. It's a good way for me to kind of get to play with you guys, get to know the community, for all of us to just kind of get together, have fun. Um, so Thursdays are still the same, solo progression and then weekend grinds. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep going on this journey. A lot of you have been asking, Iceborne, is it on the menu yet? It's looking tantalizing. Monster Hunter Rise, is it on the menu yet? Not sure on that one. Um, I would get Iceborne before Monster Hunter Rise at this point. A few more weeks. I'm going to try the Monster Hunter Rise demo a few more times once 
you know, I get that. I'm getting to the point where I feel I'm experienced enough. I can revisit the demo with a new perspective. We're going to go and revisit my initial thoughts from the Monster, uh, Monster Hunter Rise demo, uh, which were not so well received the first time. I'll see you on the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. I learned two very important things this week. The first is that it's not pronounced Raytheon, it's Arathian. And the next is little bombs blow up a lot faster than big bombs. One bomb for you. And one bomb for you. And a uh, little bomb. And little bomb. Oh shit! Pidgey hunts. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter journal where we document my entire first playthrough through Monster Hunter World. If you like that kind of stuff, be sure to subscribe and like the video. What a wild ride last night was. I am recording this now a day after stream number three. I can't believe it's only been three weeks since I've gone on to this Monster Hunter journey because it feels like I've been playing this a lot longer than that. Yesterday felt like an entirely new game. Approaching it, just the controls, everything felt more fluid. Uh, the game design was, well, maybe, maybe not the game design, but we went through so much story and they just threw so many new things at me. I'm, I'm just like, what game am I playing? After last week, you know, we, we had the Anjanath rush and then I got comfortable with it through the multiplayer. And I kind of went into it now with a whole new level of comfort. And the game just threw a whole, whole bunch of new things at me. So today's going to be sit back. We got a lot of stuff to cover. It's going to be a lot of, I don't know. This is going to be a lot of me talking about Monster Hunter. First off, we started the stream with the Zora fight and the Zora Magdara, the Zora Magdaros, I believe it's called. And what a unique fight. We've got this massive volcano turtle that is just rampaging. It's not even rampaging. It's really just kind of going for a Sunday stroll amongst the cliffs. And then we show up and try to trip it and, and throw like all these spears at it and balls of cannons and all these cannonballs. I don't know what was up with trying to capture this thing, but anyways, long story short, short, it didn't go well. It was a little bit confusing at first what I was trying to do. I was really like on the kind of like the bows at first. I was shooting it and just doing 50 damage. I'm like, all right, this isn't doing anything. And then I learned that you have to go and load the cannons with cannonballs. But then after that, after all my cannons got destroyed, I learned all the NPCs load the cannons for you and you just need to run between the cannons and shoot them and you can actually redirect them, which would have saved me a lot of time if I actually knew that was that's what was supposed to happen. Overall, very cinematic fight, very big, but honestly, the fights where you as the hunter are in uh, the fight, fighting for your life, feels far more epic. The Anjanath fight felt far more epic than the Zora fight. The Zora fight felt more cinematic, but different emotions. And then, you know, we got on the back and I know the chat was very patient with me because they were yelling at me to like, go here, hit this. You're forgetting the mines. And I'm like, everything looks the same. How am I supposed to see what I'm supposed to hit? Everything is either black throbbing with orangeness or just pure orangeness with sprinkles of black in it. It was really hard to figure out what I was supposed to do. In fact, I wandered into a secret where the whole chat just kind of went like, huh, didn't know about that one. So that was a fun surprise. It turns out that that secret just had a little more mining outpost in it. So it was nothing really that cool. Um, but overall, that thing was, it was an all right fight. And then at the end, you know, there's this other thing. I'm not sure if it's a wyvern or a dragon. It came up. That scared me because I'm like, this thing looks like a badass. I don't know if I can fight this thing. It swiped me once and like took out half my life. I was barely hanging on. Luckily, I did not have to kill it. It was kind of just a story plot, but I survived it. So that was good. No faints. And oh, we discovered this new feature on the stream where we can actually have the audience guess and, and place bets before we do things. So we started that and most of the audience um, guessed correctly that I would not be fainting. And then there's four traders out there who have no confidence in me. So shout out to you four who voted against me. Uh, overall, that was pretty much the Zora fight. It, I was expecting more, honestly, um, but it is what it is. I guess the team spent like a year on that fight, which is crazy to me. They should have been designing more monsters for us to fight. The next thing is it happened to be the Winter Star Fest when I logged in. It's happening for the next two weeks, which was exciting. I didn't know there were events still going on in this game. I guess this is like on a cyclical uh, basis. So a lot of you who've played this for a while have probably already gotten everything but I absolutely love the music. Like they've kind of uh, recomposed a certain track that has more of like Christmassy feel to it. Everybody gets a new outfit. Uh, we put our handler in a new outfit. Classy got a little snowman outfit, which is just adorable. 
but I couldn't get the whole thing because I accidentally bought the bell on his back first, not realizing I could only buy two out of, th out of the three uh, piece with my initial items that I had. So we got him his chubby body, so he's a little chubby snowman now, and we couldn't get him the headset. So instead we ended up with the Toby headset, which is a thousand times cuter. This classy cat, just don't even bother with me. Just watch the cat. The cat is the star. The cat is the one that's fighting all these monsters. The cat is the one that looks the best. Classy is the best cat. Uh, and then we got Poogie, who's got just as much of an adorable little outfit too. He is turning into a very adorable. He started off as quite the crassy pig, headbutting me because I didn't know how to pet him. But now he is just this little ball of love, was just jumping with so much like little bacon. I, like you know, he is both delicious and cute at the same time. Ah, oh, love that little pig. Uh, then we discovered some lore, which this was interesting. Uh, so I was told to go into the House of Fives, which is in the guild section. And that's a place where you can like look at a window and everyone's like, yep, that's it. You just look at the window. And I'm like, huh, what is this book here? And like half the chat was like, what book? What book? And turns out we learned the lore of the history of the world of Monster Hunter, which has, uh, which explained how five dragons, how everyone used to be immortal. And then they're like, yo, we want we want to ask some dragons some questions and then the dragons built the land and then they're like oh you want to be mortal okay good luck with death you're gonna love that one and they're like ah shit what did we do so that's long story short so that's cool that that was something a lot of the chat didn't know about and it was really cool to get that kind of piece of lore of the world i know some of you were mentioning it in the comments of the last video so we're learning more about this world it's a fascinating world we also got a little bit more upgrades in the sense of i got to upgrade my room so i can have more pets Still got my little mini cactuar running around in there. Uh, I really wish I could have the little mini cactuar running in circles around my yellow toad, but we're not there yet. Speaking of toad, found another one, and I don't know what I was thinking. I saw a blue toad. I'm like, let's kick it, and then like the instinct kicked. I'm like, run, you idiot! Stop kicking these toads on impact on on first sight. And that was a sleepy toad. Uh, did not fall asleep, luckily, so I, I managed to to run away from that. We unlocked a lot of new areas this past week including the research base, which is like a second hub mid-world, which is just garbage. I really don't like it. You, you get less features there, and I don't understand why you would go there other than for like the story element. I love the whole fact that we're like raising this ship from wherever, but I also feel like they never really tried to get out of there. This is the first fleet, which sounds like, I think it's the first fleet. It sounds like they were wrecked and they were just chilling in this research base and you show up from the fifth fleet and they're just like yeah i guess it's time we we, we get out of here you want to go hunt this thing and get some balloons it's like they're hunters too they could have gone this thing out of the air whenever they wanted and they're just sitting amongst their books smoking their pipes drinking their whatever they drink i don't think they wanted to move so the fact that like they waited for whatever i don't even know how often fleets come around but man these these people were not in a hurry to get out of that spot uh, that area is also um, around the Coral Highlands, which is a really beautiful area. I can't believe uh, just the different like ecosystem. We've gone from like this this very like traditional forest to kind of a desert. Was not expecting an underwater world without the water. It's like the best part. You get to see all the coral reefs and all of that, but you you don't have to deal with any of that water business. It's fantastic. Uh, so it's really beautiful. I discovered the wiggler worms. Apparently there was a red queen that I don't even know what that was. And I don't, I didn't even know what a worm was at first. And I just like walked over it. So, um, I missed my chance on getting a red wiggler, but we did get a blue one. So maybe a red one will spawn next time. We went through that and eventually we ended up in the, pretty much the, the, the butthole of Monster Hunter. We discovered the Rotten Vale, which I jokingly said, this reminds me of like, it feels like we're inside a colon right now. Um, and apparently that's what it is. Like when you look at the map, it looks like you're actually inside a dead beast. So I just got into this area. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but so far I hate it. Everything is poisonous. Everything is smelly. Uh, there's little bugs that are interrupting you when you're trying to sharpen. Just everything about this section screams garbage. I just don't like it. All you need is that, that fish monster that kind of looks like it has like a dick face and put it in there. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. There was a clip where we re-encountered the fish monster from the from last time and i saw it in a new light all right now to the good part let's get to the monsters and we i 
Well, I guess it's we because a lot of people helped me. We went through four monsters this time. Uh, the first one was a Tsitsi Yaku, which I prefer calling the Tsitsiki sauce monster. Some of you like to call it the paparazzi raptor. I get it. This was a really fun fight. I felt no threat because of its size. And I actually know how to control my character enough to know that I can pretty much get around him. He got me a few times with the like, with his flash. He flashed me a few times. What a pervert. And I finally learned like, okay, you get like a little setup that you can run, get out of the cone and just keep smashing them. I've really started to get good at mounting every monster I fight. I've also gone pretty good at um, doing more elemental discharge, maybe not to the level that some of you guys say. I know some of you are saying, do it more. And then sometimes when they're on the ground and you just like stab your, your switch axe or no, wait, you guys want me to call it a swax. You shove that in their body and then you're just like, and you just kill them like that. Yeah, we're doing lots of that. And I captured it. So that's another cool new thing. Uh, last week on the multiplayer stream, I was exper I was learning how to capture. I was really uncomfortable in how to do it. This time I captured, I think, three or four monsters. Do not pay attention to the counters on screen because my counter um, mechanic was broken. So we were not able to increment any of the counters live, but I'm gonna fix that for the next stream. So I can capture now. I know how to craft things. Like my skills are just like boop, boop, boop. I am leveling up. I'm like a level 10 hunter right now. Uh, next up, oh, and the armor set for the Tsitsi, Tsitsi Yaku, fantastic. That thing, a blue samurai looking thing with like angry eyebrows coming out. I love it. Um, we're probably gonna, gonna grind this one out eventually. There's, there's too many things to do at this point. I don't even know what to do. Then we went up against the Paolumu, aka the Kirby monster, which pretty much just vacuums the air and then gets big and floats. This fight was less fun than the Tsitsi. We're just gonna call him Tsitsi. Um, there was nothing really iconic about it other than he flies. I got to learn how to use the, um, like a flashbang thing to bring him down to the ground. So as a hunter, I progressed a little bit in like learning to use new mechanics. Otherwise he was, he was, he was not really iconic, much of an iconic fight for me. I don't really have a major takeaway. The armor set is okay. I really love the captain's hat that comes with that armor set. That's about all I have to say about him. So at this point, we're about three hours in. We done, we've, we did Zora. We've gone through two monsters, which really didn't give me much of a challenge. I'm just like, I miss, I miss the Injanith rush. I want more of that. I want to feel threatened. I want to panic and I want to scream as much as a Heiji screams. And so everyone's like, all right, you're ready, let's go do, let's go do a Rathian. Rathian? Rathian. And I was like, oh no, that scares me. Am I ready? And they're all like, yeah, 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 you're ready. Go, if you can do an Anjanith, you can do a Rathian. So we, we went and fought Rathian. The queen of the monsters, as some like to say, as I learned, she was the first designed monster in the Monster Hunter world, or Monster Hunter universe. She put up a good fight. Oh my goodness. Uh, reading her move was tough. Um, she is aggressive and she is big and she is threatening. And then eventually she flew to the place where there's the stupid fish monster. And then they were fighting and I'm like trudging through the water. And I'm like, I don't want to be here. And then the Rathian like dodged out of the way. And then out of nowhere, this dick face monster, just like, like, you know, you're fighting like this evil wyvern that wyvern. Yeah. Wyvern. And you're like, you know, focus on the scaly reptile. Like, and then it like dodges and all you see is this like, translucent smooth round like dick face thing coming at you it was not pleasant i hate that fish so much no tail for you uh oh whoa that thing looked like a big it looked like a big dick coming at me that was scary anyways i ignored the fish got over my dick fear and the Rathian pretty much took care of it. It got scared, it ran away. Meanwhile, I'm hacking away on the tail. We got the tail off, that helped a lot. We kept, I, I was getting a little bit more familiar with her. Um, she she caused me a faint, which props to her, that, that was deserved, that was a noob, I deserved it. And then eventually she fell asleep and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna bomb her. And that's where we got this fantastic scene of me not knowing how little bombs worked. Now we know. She almost made me faint a second time. It was getting really rough in that like tight corner. So I'm like, oh, we got to take the fight out of here. And I like lured her out to a wider area so I wouldn't get destroyed in that cramped area like Anjanath did to me. And we we won. It felt great. Uh, it was a good rush. And the armor 
You know, I was disappointed because the armor is a very classic knight armor with like a nice little like monster hunter like touch to it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to wear it, but it's a cool looking armor set. And then the then we went over to the Rotten Vale where we had our last fight, which was with a Radoban, which is like this really big bone covered monster. I'm like, yes, give this to me. It is big. It is intimidating. Uh, it wasn't as intimidating as a Rathian, but this was a fun fight like this was one of my funnest fight to this point it was challenging it was fast i never felt like i had the upper the upper hand on it it kept me guessing as to what it was doing um i was getting a lot more comfortable i know a lot of people were telling me switch to your sword mode switch to your sword mode i really do like a balance of of the axe and the sword so i was like bopping my axe against the side a few times in succession which would eventually break the bone and i'm like oh i love that and then when the nice meat, tender meat was exposed. I'm like, all right, sword time. And I'm like, slash, 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 like, brr. And just fighting that thing was, was, and then it like started, it has this like spin attack. So it kind of does like a Sonic. Uh, but then when it's like weak, it's doing like a wobbly Sonic. I'm like, oh, I got it. And then like, I, I got this rush to like kind of go in, but that's when things were getting even more dangerous because now it was hitting me more because it was more unpredictable. It was doing like a side like slash that was hurting me. And then it was starting to like go in the ground. So it's always that last, a lot you say, it's always that last part when they are close to death that they're the most dangerous. And I felt that. Um, so that fight was, was, was really good. Like it felt really good. And I think this is the hook. I think this is the click you guys are talking about that, that craving, that appetite for a bigger challenge because all the other monsters just don't cut it anymore. And you go out as a hunter because you want to be challenged that way. I have to say, let's make it official on journal five. I get it. I get it. I get it. It makes sense. I love it. There we go. I'm done. I'm done with the denial. It's, it's a fun time. And it's a fun time trying to seek out the next rush from this game. It's a really wild game. Like I'm going to do probably a proper review on this once we're all done, but it's been a wild ride. And every week it's just something so new, so different. So that was everything we did yesterday. I'm not sure if I can get around to doing a community stream this weekend. It's just a really busy time of the year for this weekend. Um, so I'm not sure how much I'll progress to the next stream, but as always, Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash heyjofficial is when we do progression streams. Uh, so we'll continue the story and continue hunting new monsters. If you don't, if you can't catch it on Twitch, uh, I upload the VODs here on YouTube. The link is below. I think I leave a comment because YouTube does some weird truncating with links. So look for my pinned comment. That'll take you to the playlist. You can also check out the homepage of HeyJ on YouTube and you can find the Monster Hunter VOD playlist there. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you all next week or on the next Monster Hunter Journal. And until then, keep it classy. I've come up with a new move. I call it the Hey J Invasion Sensation or the Bum Rush. Oh, we're putting it, we're putting it where it counts. What a finish. Hey J Hunts. Bum Rushes aside, this week was a week full of emotions on this stream. But before that, if this is your first Monster Hunter journal with me, be sure to, if you enjoy these sorts of stories of a noob going through Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter for the first time, be sure to subscribe and like the video. So let's talk about what happened this week. It was a tough week. I met my first loss. I hit my first wall, the Diablos. But before we get to that, let's talk about all the other good stuff. So going in, I got a few new mechanics. I was introduced at uh, the research base to this cat safari, which is kind of cool. And you know what? I'm just remembering now I sent four cats or three cats out on a mission and I completely forgot about them. I did not check in on them during the whole entire stream. So the next time we go in, you guys got to remind me, check up on my cats. I wonder how they're doing. Uh, we changed a few things. So we unanimously decided 60% to 40% maybe not unanimously last week that the handler is not cringy the handler is not cringy i am more cringe than the handler and to prove it we changed the handler cringe counter to the hey j cringe counter and it's already higher than the handler cringe counter so my my point stands proven we did a few before we get into the hunts actually we're gonna get into the hunts very quick but uh, i did try to do some non-hunting quests so i finally did my first egg quest after 
quite a bit of debate between if I should or I shouldn't. This time I was like, you know, sometimes you just got to play the game like you want and you got to ignore the chat. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this egg quest. And I picked one. Turns out it was like a herbivore egg quest, which is apparently not as exciting as maybe a wyvern egg quest. Still, there was quite a bit of hype around chugging this egg across the field as I had three, eventually five angry herbivores chasing me because they didn't like that I was taking its egg. Few things there. I got lucky, I think, on the first one. Did not drop, did not get hit. It got close. I had five of these herbivores like right up on my back and I'm like climbing and trying to like haul this egg and I actually did it. The second time I dropped it once, but then we got it again. So I, I, I'm a pretty natural egg carrier. Now the weird thing about eggs is you walk so slow with an egg and I don't get it. Like you're hauling these massive weapons on your back and you're just running and drinking potions and Superman diving. But when it comes to carrying an egg, that's the hunter's weakness. They just, they can't hustle with an egg in their hands no matter how not heavy it is. All right, then um, we'll talk about, so I, I basically went through four monsters this past week, which were all very formidable foes, starting with, and I'll probably pronounce this wrong, we've we've learned I can't pronounce monster names properly. In fact, this ne this next one, the, the Leg Legiana, <clears throat> uh, I don't even know if that's right, but it sounds a lot better than the first name I came up with, It was which was the Legina, which, don't go repeating that in the schoolyard, kids. Um, so first up was the Legiana, then we had the Odagara, Odag Odag you see why I have a notepad with me? Because I can't read these things. Odagaron, Odagaron, we'll call him Clifford. Uh, then we went to Diablos, and then we wrapped up the, the stream nicely with, with a good old visit to Rathalos. Uh, before we get into this, I just want to address one thing. A lot of people have complimented me, thank you, uh, about my ability to dodge in this game, which it's been said so many times that I've started reflecting on why am I why am I good at this? A lot of people are saying uh, time and time again after every stream, they've noticed I am very good at dodging at the last minute. And it's not because I have some superpower that I actually know what the monster is going to do. So I've actually reflected on this. And I think it comes down to three things outside of my amazing skill. No, I'm kidding. So the first is, of course, the monsters um, project. There's an animation that indicates when they're about to do an attack. And yes, that's one indicator that kind of triggers my dodge rolls out of the way. The other two, after putting some thought, I noticed, I think subconsciously, I'm picking up on specific sounds that the monsters make. And I cannot tell you which sounds they are, but I do know at one point, my subconscious eventually associates a certain sound to pain. And I think my reflex just kicks in and dodges when I, whenever I hear that sound. And that happens without me even being aware of it. That's theory number two. Theory number three, I think, is the most interesting one, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So I think inherently in every battle in Monster Hunter, there's a certain amount of timing. And a lot of you have described this as a dance. Whenever you hunt, you're essentially dancing with the monster in a pattern. And I've noticed upon reflection that I know that after maybe three to five second window, no matter what is happening in the fight, I know that monster is going to attack me and I will preemptively dodge, which often probably results in me dodging out of the way on time. And that I think comes from the fact that I've just been playing the games for my entire life that within every game, there is this inherent timing. And so I know that on any monster I fight, I can usually get two to three hits and depend, you know, even if I don't see the monster on camera, I know I just got to dodge out of the way because there's probably an attack coming just based on the rhythm of that fight. So those are my uh, my theories on why I'm subconsciously dodging. One is noticing the animation, but you know, sometimes the camera isn't always on the monster and I still dodge. The second is the sound and the third is just that timing where you just get into that rhythm of slash slash jump out of the way, especially if they're not on the ground. So anyway, enough about me. Let's get into this Legiana, which is basically the ice version of Rathlos, in my opinion. So this one was not as intimidating. I kind of went in a little bit scared of the ice, but you know, since we dealt with a Rathian last week, uh, this one I was just like, all right, it's a Rathian that flies with ice. I got iced a lot more than what chat uh, bet on. I think uh, the bet was 
Uh, will Jay get iced more than three times? Most people said yes. I voted yes as well. And I got iced like four to five times. That ice hurts a lot. So I learned that the ice basically, I think it drains your stamina if I remember correctly. Um, if I recall, I had... How did I heal from that? I don't remember how I healed, but I was pretty good at healing. Eventually in the fight, we got the Tsitsiki monster that came in and you know, they started messing stuff up and I was like, get out of here Tsitsi. We don't need you unless you want to like flash this thing brand down for me so I can hack it. And of course, this is where I pulled off my signature new move, the Hey J Invasion Sensation. Now, after doing it this time so perfectly, it has become my mission in Monster Hunter to finish off all new monsters with the Hey J Invasion Sensation. I have to come up with a catchier name, but I kind of like that for now. Uh, but uh, I was not successful. I've only done it once. Uh, otherwise, I learned that the flash pods are very important for flying monsters. I was not executing it very well on this monster, but I need to start farming some of those flash bugs because very useful as I learned later on in Rathalos. Next up, Clifford. Man, a lot of you on YouTube and in Discord and everywhere have been pretty much saying, this would be my wall, this big red lizard. And I was genuinely afraid because of so much buildup over the weeks of you guys just saying, I will die. And they're like, I can't wait till he meets Clifford. He's gonna, Clifford's gonna destroy him. He will bleed. I did bleed. Uh, I was surprised to see it was a big lizard. I really thought it was gonna be a puppy. I don't know why. I thought it was gonna be a little bit hairier since you guys refer to it as a big red puppy. Uh, this thing was fast, like, oh my god, I think my voice actually, like, squeaked at one point at how fast it was, uh, just, like, in sheer terror of it. It has the whole, um, I think, I don't know what makes you bleed, if it's the claws or the mouth, but either way, bleeding sucks, I did not learn how to heal it, but I do know, like, I, I learned later on that you can use the jerky to heal, but I didn't know that in the fight. Oh, that's another thing. So during the fight, there was an adamant amount of requests to basically mute the chat so that they couldn't influence my fight with Clifford. So we went to a moat only mode so nobody could give me tips. And I went into this fight blind and what a rush this one was. It was intense. It was fast. I bled and then I learned the technique of hiding in the bush. I never did that before, but hiding in the bush saved me so much. And then come out of the bush to attack uh, the monster really helped me out. Um, it, this was a really, like, this was a really fun fight to challenge my skills where I was at. It was pretty much based, like, the, the requirements of this fight are all about dodging and attacking. It's, it's not like the other fights where you have to bring secondary items, uh, like a flash pod, for example, to really help you with your fight. We got the tail off pretty quick on this thing. Um, and the most surprising thing for me is I did not cart once on this fight. So that was like a massive amount of hype for me where I'm just like, what wall, what wall? Um, this thing was nothing. And uh, I came very close to dying. I think at one point I got less to, I had less than five HP in which the chat was cheering because they wanted me to die. It's crazy chat. Um, but yeah, I, I beat, I beat the Autogaron and um, it was fun and I didn't die. So there, suck it chat. Now, the other, uh, talking about the armor, the Legiana armor was kind of cool, but it's not something I like want necessarily. The Tsitsi is still my favorite armor, by the way. The Odogaran armor, everybody was like, look at it, you're gonna love it. It's an evil ninja armor, and I don't like evil things. So I'm like, eh, eh, I don't really like it. I know a lot of you out there love it. They're like, that's the point. You're supposed to look like a badass, but I don't like it. So after that, we tracked down uh, one of the elder or the first Wyverian and they're like, all right, it's time. It's time, you little nooblet. You gotta, you gotta rise to the top and you gotta, you gotta fight some wyverns and kill the, um, the kings of these kingdoms. And so we were given the quest of to take on Rathalos or to take on Diablos. And we put it up to the chat to vote and the chat said, let's go and take on Diablos. So I was like, all right, let's see what this Diablos is all about. Again, Diablos is another name that has come up in my comments a lot, so I was looking forward to seeing what the big deal was. And Diablos has given me so many new emotions in this game. I didn't just lose to Diablos. I got destroyed by Diablos. I have never been so utterly, utterly destroyed by a monster in this game the way Diablo destroyed me. Like maybe the first time I met Anjanath and I poked him for fun and I knew I wasn't like 
trained in the game and he destroyed me. We all laughed it off. But here, I had a lot of victories under my belt. My pride was riding high from Clifford. And Diablo just went, sit down, son. And he just horned me up, tossed me around to the point where whenever I saw his face in the game, I felt terror because I knew that if you saw the face, you were probably a second away from losing half your health. This thing hits hard. And I understand the pattern he's slow, but I still don't know how to attack him. So he's got the big horns on his face. If you're seeing those, he's gonna charge at you or he's gonna swing twice at you with a huge range that takes out pretty much your entire life in one or two hits. If you try to attack from behind, he's got the big hammer tail that just swings and keeps you away. And then if you try to go in from the side, he side hustles and crushes you that way. So approaching him is very high risk from every direction. I tried to jump uh, from cliffs on him, but those opportunities are rare and far between. I tried to like get him to kind of do the bull rush into the cliff sides. I did that a few times, but half the time I got hit. So I'm just like, oh, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. The pride is broken. Everything hurts. I'm sad. I am scared of Diablos. And so I was about to like end the stream there. I, I was absolutely defeated. It really hurt me in a place I didn't even know I had. But we got we got a little bit of like energy back and we're like, no, one more fight, one more fight. And I'm like, all right, we, we got to visit Rathlos. And everyone is like, well, Rathlos is harder. I was like, I don't know. I've seen Rathlos before. You know, I've seen him. I fought the Rathian. How much harder can the king be? And so we went in and I, I knew I had the fireproof armor. I was like, all right, let's go. Let's do this. We're fighting Rathalos. And oh man, was Rathalos. Rathalos was fun. Rathalos was Anjanath on steroids. It's basically the fight of Anjanath, but more intense, faster, and it's in the air. So I had a lot of, I had a lot more success dodging Rathalos. He hits less hard than Diablos. And eventually I learned the art of flash pods to the point where I could actually do it a lot better where I'm like flash pod like ninja pod on the ground and bring the Rathlos down and then we hacked him and then the tail flew off. I was like, yes, we're doing some progress. And it was intense. Like we were going toe to toe, I feel. I think he he caused me one faint if I remember correctly. And it was just kind of like this back and forth of like, oh no, I'm poison. Oh no, I'm out of flash pods, get some bugs. Uh, but it felt like we were going toe to toe versus Diablos was just like, get out of my way. Um, and then of course we slayed it. We slayed the Rathalos right at midnight, right at the end of the stream. Got my pride back still though with a lot of cracks in it. It felt good. We went and got the armor set. Actually, I went and looked at the armor set. I could only afford one piece of armor, I think. So I went with the, um, the thigh flaps for the lack of a better name. And it matches really well with the Anginus, 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 Anginus armor. So now I've got kind of like the souped up armor. It was an emotional stream and, you know, looking now to the next stream, Diablos, we need to have a rematch. And that's why this weekend, tomorrow, Sunday from 10 a.m. Eastern time to 2 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to go train. We're going to go train hard. We're going to get some armor, craft some new weapons, do some research on this Diablos because I have a date with Diablos this Thursday and we need to dish out some payback. This thing scares me, but I will not stop here. I will not be walled by a Diablos. I'm gonna suit up and we're gonna fight this thing and kill it so I can progress my Monster Hunter journey. So if you wanna join me, we're gonna be doing about two hours of multiplayer tomorrow out of uh, the four hour block. The first two hour, I'm gonna do optional quests and just kind of gather some knowledge on the Diablos and get ready on my own. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna invite the multiplayer group uh, to do some some grinding with me keep in mind it's still a challenge to do multiplayer with so many viewers i can usually do about three uh hunters every 15 minutes so that only lets us do about 12 players an hour and since we're doing two hours that's about 24 players so keep that in mind if you do want to participate you probably have to come in early and queue up early i wish i could do more but these are the limits of the game diablos i'll see you next week and until next time keep it classy
previously on Hey J Hunts. I didn't just lose to Diablos. I got destroyed by Diablos. I have never been so utterly, utterly destroyed by a monster in this game the way Diablo destroyed me. Oh, how the tables have turned. Give me your body parts. Oh, that felt good. Yeah, you cry. Cry, man. Nice! I got bigger monsters to kill. This dance is over. Hey J Hunts! Welcome back to another Hey J Hunts! This week, the Diablos is no more, low rank is now behind me, and I'm a little bored. We're gonna get into all of that, but if you like updates on the whole Monster Hunter journey I'm going through, be sure to subscribe and like the video. Let's start off on where we left off last week. I was absolutely crushed, demoralized, and destroyed by this Diablos. He gave me the shakes. I'm pretty sure I had a nightmare or two, and I wouldn't walk around the house at night because I heard his screams. Sunday came around, and we did, we trained. We trained so much, we grinded. Okay, so this was actually a whole new mindset of how I approached armor, which is, I think, the way you need to do it. I went through my entire armor list and looked at defense and I looked at skills, which is very important. So just look at defense alone. I pretty much narrowed it down to five monsters worth hunting, which were the uh, Legiana, Rathlos, what other monsters are in that upper tier? Pretty much um, uh, Clifford and all of them. So I looked at kind of those low rank end game monsters. And that's where I found that we had the highest defense. I was like, all right, I need to craft some armor out of this. And then I went through every piece and I picked out some skills that I think would help such as sheathing quickly, having more health, a uh, little bit more stamina. And I think I had some for stun and I had a bit of ice stuff as well. So all of that considered, looking at the set I fought Diablos with last week compared to this week, I had about twice as much defense. I also used my sphere orbs or orb spheres, whatever they're called, and I leveled up that armor twice. So every piece of armor, I think, got like 20 to 30 extra defense. It was a crazy amount of more defense. Anyway, twice as much defense. Skills, I looked ugly, but oh my god, I went back into i just want to make sure i went back into this fight with diablos and it was a whole night and day difference and if you watch the stream you'll see i'm actually still scared of diablos and i was actually kind of delaying starting the fight with him because i was so nervous i was like i don't want to go through this experience again i don't want to get destroyed this bad like i got i got just like molested last last week by this by this monster and um i did try doing like the hammer i was going to do the hammer and while i was training i did a lot of hammer runs to try and get a sense of it but i just couldn't get anything to feel right with the hammer after i think it was like three or four hunts i was like you know what let's just go with that pride that i i died by the switch axe let's have a revenge with a switch axe and before we get into my full revenge i just want to say during the training session i discovered the special arena quest which was a really interesting and this was during the multiplayer stream um i did a single player though interesting mechanic to kind of have that monster without the environment and working in the arena i like it um but what i like more is actually i think it's special arena where you get you don't get to pick your gear or your weapon you just kind of get sent with a pre-configured gear to fight a monster and i went through this very fast it was kind of a reward for a uh, mini guy lad who was helping moderate the whole multiplayer stream last time we just went in for a rathian not realizing, I thought I picked the switch axe loadout, but I picked a switch blade loadout and I entered the arena. I was like, wait, this isn't a switch axe. And I started fighting the Rathian with a switch blade, not knowing how to use this thing. And for the most part, it felt much faster than a switch axe. I was like, oh man, this feels so good. So I know a lot of you, uh, well, when I started, I had a little bit of affinity towards the switch blade. I was like, I'm going to come back to you. That accidental match gave me that itch where I'm like, Switchblade, you and I, we have a date with Destiny eventually. I'm going to come back to Switchblade because it played so interestingly that I want to. But first, Switch Axe. So anyway, so we go back to Diablos. I see it there, stalking its cactuses everywhere. It's cacti, sorry. 
And I'm just like, oh man, I'm gonna hurt you so much after everything you did to me. We're going for some revenge. And I got in there, I brought some screamer pods so it would hide. It was a very different fight. Last time it ran out of its cave pretty quick and it was kind of like hanging around the cliffs a lot. So I was trying to jump on it and it cornered me around the cliffs. This time we stayed in the caverns most of the time and it used a lot more of its digging features. Uh, so I actually ran out of my screen pods very quickly. I had made screen pods, I had the easy screen pods and they were awesome because when I would go underground, I would just like launch that at the ground. It would come out and I could get a few hits on it. Now my goal was not just to defeat Diablos, it was to absolutely destroy it. And I have to say I was quite successful in that. I knocked and broke both of its horns, its tail flew out, I got no carts, and we destroyed this thing for the beast it is. Like I made this thing my, insert word. Um, and it felt good, it felt, it felt like this thing couldn't touch me. And I think that armor was a big key piece of that because uh, when I actually did get hit, it didn't take half my life the way that it did last week. It was like a sliver of my life. So I'm like, all right, I've got proper gear now. Um, actually like fighting it, I, I was a little bit more cautious in how to fight it. I just, I just mopped the floor with it. it. It felt good. Like it felt almost like it was too easy. And then from there, let me make sure I got everything. Yeah, from there we went on to the Zora part two, which did we really need to have another fight with this? Uh, I know I already shared that I don't care much about the story and all of you have said, yeah, the story doesn't matter. But my God, Zora battle part two, I I actually disliked it. The first one I was like, eh, it was, a, it was an interesting experience because it's cinematic, but part two, redoing the same thing was horrendous, boring, tedious, and it was, I didn't like it. So now we had like these stalagmites or stalactites, whatever they're called, that we had to like knock down. They give you like a brief as you're flying. They're like, oh, you're, you're gonna wanna knock those down. So I'm like launching rocks at it, nothing's happening. I'm, people are saying climb higher. So I'm trying to climb higher. I'm still launching rocks, nothing's happening. And then I realize, oh, if you if you like zoom in and look real close, there's barrels tied to those stalactites, mites, whatever. And that's what you have to hit. I didn't know. So I ended up, I think, knocking one, which was really unsatisfying to do. I was lost again most of the time, just like wailing on a rock that spits back every now and then. And then there was the, the Nigel dragon that showed up and we left him alone. I didn't go mess with him. And then we, you know, then you go into like the defense to try. And I'm just like, this plot mechanic is so horrendously boring when you compare it to the rest of Monster Hunter and what the experience is. I'm glad the Zora chapter is done. I don't know what's next. Now we're like, hunting some mysterious Rathian markings and trackings. But the Zora chapter, like, let it rest. I hope it doesn't come back because, man, that was super boring. We, we got to use a Dragonator, so that was cool. The Dragonator is a cool word. It's a cool weapon. Everything else about it is really boring. And then, okay, so the big, the big milestone this week is we actually entered higher rank. And I, I thought it would have been a little bit more of a fanfare, but it's kind of a gradual... Hey, let's go back and visit this area. Oh, that monster sure is hard. Uh, my initial impressions of high rank are, I don't feel challenged yet. And I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but I feel I'm gonna come across as arrogant because, so I, I fought the Puke Puke, which is the first thing. I'm just like, oh my God, he's got so much more HP. Like I can tell that he's tougher, but I'm not struggling. I'm just, it's just taking me longer to kill him. And I was like, but it's Puke Puke, it's an entry level. So then we went and we fought something a little higher level, which I think a Tsitsi counts as higher level. Same thing, I was like, this is this is like clockwork. I know how to mop the floor with this thing. Um, and it just takes longer because it's hiring. And I was like, I wanna fight something new. I want a bigger challenge. And everyone's like, tee hee hee, B52. So I was like, show it to me, where is it? So I'm looking at the map and I see that there's an unknown monster in the spiral waste. So I'm like, all right, let's go see what this is about. So I'm going, I'm hunting, and then there it is. This, this beautiful, majestic beast, which I thought was like a dark Diablos for a moment. But then I'm like, no, it's got eggs like on its pouch and stuff. Turns out it's probably gonna pronounce this wrong. A basil juice, a basil juice, basil. It sounds like beetle juice. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, this is the rumored B-52 bomber. I've heard so much about this. Didn't think it would be such an anticlimactic intro i thought he was gonna fly over me and kind of surprise me i just kind of walked in on him and he's just like kind of roaming around the desert being like what's up and so i was like 
this is probably a bad idea. The game tells me don't attack it. And I was like, let's just go poke it. Let's have one of these like fun Anjanath moments just to see what the what the gap in skill is. So there I see this beautiful beast, the, the basil goose, basil juice, be beetle juice, whatever, B-52 bomber. Because I know I've just entered high rank, this is one of like the rumored terrifying things. The game tells me don't attack it. And everyone's like, oh my God, he finally found it. Let's see what happens. So I go ahead and fight it. And that fight went surprisingly well. And I carded once because he got me in a corner and I think I, I just got like blown up. But otherwise, I'm like, okay, he's slow. I can predict what he's doing. All right, he's flying overhead. Okay, don't go under him because that's where he's got all the sack of explosives and just keep wailing on him. I Oh, we got rid of his tail at one point. And I was like, oh my God, my first encounter with B-52 and I'm actually gonna kill it. Uh, but it was an expedition and he ended up flying away. But I was pretty much doing well. Um, I, could, I could have finished him if I had more time, but that's the problem I'm facing with high rank is I can't deal enough damage fast enough. Um, but on the defense side, so far I'm not having any issues, but I haven't really encountered more. Like the fact that I that I fought that thing with no issues just kind of has me going like, come on high rank, give me something to, to bite into, give me, give me some challenge. So I was a little bit disappointed and bored with the stream after hearing about this B-52 bomber for so many weeks and not really knowing anything about it other than it was terrifying and to have went into this fight blind, unprepared, and pretty much have held my own, took off its tail, and would have won if I could have done more damage. It's a, it's a little disappointing. Uh, outside of that, high rank has crazy amount of armor. Just as I was starting to get comfortable with armor, they're like, oh yeah, now we have two styles of armor for every armor you have, and you have to go and re-farm re -farm and re-grind all of the monsters you've already fought. And I'm just like trying to process. I'm like, okay, what's the defense here? What's the skill here? Oh my God, what am I? There's just way too much stuff to do. Uh, so I don't know how I'm gonna process all this. I'm probably gonna need another menu stream or two. And it's gonna take me some time to, to, to reabsorb this. As a lot of people said, it feels like the game has essentially reset, but now I have all of my base knowledge kind of like solidified. And now I actually have to learn skills, I have to learn maximum loadouts, maximizing my loadouts, optimizing for monsters. All of that said, I'm more interested of, I wanna fight new monsters, I wanna discover new monsters, I want new challenges. I hope that that's gonna be coming in in the next stream. We also uh, came across, I can now buy the attack and defense charms, so I got buffs from that. Thanks to my B-52 bomber fight, um, he dropped some he dropped something that let me craft talons, I think, which let me upgrade both of my charms and buy two more charms. I'm not quite sure how much buff that is, but I feel like I've got some pretty stacked chances in my favor already right from the get-go entering high rank. So other than that, I, I'm I'm at a point where I've, I think I've like I've plateaued in, in the hype. Like th this week's stream had that big excitement of, I need to blast through this wall. And I almost feel like I, I blasted through the wall a little bit too hard. And I was like, okay, where's, I need, I need some more challenge. And I really, I assuming that there's a lot more, like I know I'm talking very blindly here to a lot of experienced people. Uh, I just hope I can get more of that rush. And I, I really hope it wasn't just limited to those kind of early monsters as a first experience. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to next. High rank right now, is just a lot of confusing armor to me and more buff monsters, but they're not challenging me yet. Uh, if this was wood, I would knock on it because I might regret those words. But otherwise, it's been a, a fun time. This weekend, we're doing a challenge stream where I'm going to be trying to do uh, a random weapon against a random monster that I've already fought. We'll see how that goes. We're going to do more multiplayer stuff. We're going to do a little bit of optional quests, grinding out some items for the canteen and all that. And overall, I'm just having a good time, having a fun time. I will be getting Iceborne. Uh, I have a key for Iceborne. I'm just waiting to activate it to finish kind of that vanilla Monster Hunter world. And now I just want to like, I just want to consume all of this game. Like I just want to give me all the monsters, give me all the quests. Let's just get through this. Now I'm invested. Uh, it's no longer a let's try the game. Now it's a matter of let's complete this game and let's just go through all the content it has to offer so I can get into Iceborne because my sights are already there. Because I don't have any sense right now, like, step back a bit. When you enter the first world in Monster Hunter World, 
you you know you see eventually an anjanath and you see a rathalos and you're like oh my god these things are terrifying and i've i've destroyed those and where i am in the game right now i haven't seen anything that scares me where i'm like i need to work to that so i need a new goal like right now i'm i'm in an open world setting with monsters i already know that got buffed up in defense and maybe a little bit of attack that's not intimidating or enticing i need to, i need to see something else that i can be like that's my goal that's what i need to do so the game needs to set me up with something and i think that's a beat they might have missed at this point in the story where okay you just beat the zora you just entered high rank but they're just like go into the world that you're familiar with and do whatever you want um instead of setting up kind of your next pillar to aim for so that's where we're at i'll see you otherwise on the next stream or the next journal and until next time keep it classy terror has a new name and it's Nergigante. Does the music have to be so scary? What a thank you for that sax. The sax helps. Hey, hunts. All right, make yourself comfortable because for this journal, I've got three streams to go over. I've played so much Monster Hunter World in the last week. I say so much, but it was actually 12 hours. And I know a lot of you guys, those are rookie numbers. But for me, that is almost three times more Monster Hunter than I usually play. So anyways, on this journal, we're going to get started with the challenge stream. So last week, as part of the 10,000 subscriber YouTube celebration, we did a challenge stream. That's where I rolled a dice, picked a random weapon, and then rolled another dice to pick one of the first 16 monsters I've come across, and we just mashed it up. And through that, I got to experience weapons in a new way. For the most part, I learned... I, I, I was okay with the weapon matching with the kind of first few monsters, the they were all high rank monsters, but I, I dubbed them the, the low rank of the high rank. But anything that I had to fight, like a Rathalos or anything in that like upper, the, the second half of those first 16, that was hard. I got destroyed. So let's go over the weapons I learned. So the Gun Lance, I learned to appreciate a little bit better. I got into, by the way, I got like, I asked the chat to rate me on my weapon usage on all of these. They all gave me like C's, so don't expect anything fantastic from what you're seeing in the footage. But the Gun Lance, I learned about holding my ground, poke, boom, poke, boom, poke, boom. I love poking and booming. Uh, it has kind of a good flow to it. It's a very different play style than kind of, you know, swinging a sword or an axe around, dodging, rolling, uh, positioning. It's really just, I'm here come at me, shields up, poke, boom, poke, boom. And then sometimes you stick a knife in them and let that explode. I surprisingly really liked that playstyle more than I thought I would have. It's completely different than the other playstyle of like, go in, attack, roll out, dodge, go back in, which was more what I've been enjoying. So Gun Lance was a nice surprise. We went up against a Kulu with, which was a good practice uh, to start. And then I went up against a Baroth, which was really satisfying to kind of poke something that is big. Gunlance, way more fun when it's big. Uh, then I got to play with some dual blades. Uh, dual blades were pretty much exactly as I remember them. No big breakthrough. It was kind of a nice, just fast paced stuff. I, I learned about more of the demon mode and how to get in and out of that. Um, it felt nice, but it wasn't anything to kind of, it, it didn't offer me anything unique. I feel I could play the, the dual blade type of combat in a lot of other games. So why would I play it in Monster Hunter when there's all these other unique opportunities available to me? The bow, I played the bow. I thought I did good, but apparently everybody has been laughing at me because my bow play was absolutely terrible. I did not know what I was doing. Apparently, I thought I did. So I was kind of like mid to close with all the monsters and I was just like shooting them in the face, dodge, like three shot. I thought I was doing good, but apparently I was an embarrassment to all the bow users everywhere. So for that, I'm never touching bow again. Just kidding, I might, I might, I might, I might, I might, but I don't want to. Um, we got into the charge blade a lot, and I actually learned about charging the shield, charging the sword. I learned so much about how to use the charge blade and how to unleash kind of the, oh, I forget the acronym, but there's like a big super attack, which I did once. It's a lot though. I went in with the charge blade against uh, learning how to do all that. So I trained a bit to learn how to do, how to do all the, the sequences. And then they sent me up against an Odo. Uh, I forget his full name, Clifford. 
And it was so fast, dodging, trying to run around while trying to remember, okay, I gotta, I gotta charge this, I gotta do this. I was getting destroyed. And then the B-52 bomber showed up. Yeah, we laughed about him last week. A lot of you said, oh, he's not that bad on his own. It's when he comes into other battles. I get it. I get what you guys mean. Uh, he was just messing up everything. And I'm just like trying to do the charge blade. And I got this guy like dropping bombs everywhere. Clifford jumping on me. Uh, it was a mess. But I feel like I actually learned how to use the charge blade a little bit better. And then the last weapon out of sheer luck, the, the end of the streams are always the most epic. I got a hunting horn. I rolled on a hunting horn against a Rathalos of all things. It was not as bad as I thought it would be. A lot of bonks on the head, uh, but there was a Rathian that showed up. So it was a Rathalos and a Rathian against me with a hunting horn. that I'm just like, doot, 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 doot. And uh, it just wasn't, it was not effective. I did not win that. I got destroyed too. I got a few cool things in. I got like to swing off a rope and brought some like rocks down on a Rathalos, which was really cool. Um, but otherwise, I knew I was going in very inexperienced. I did learn how to like queue up some songs and how to give myself buffs. But man, it was hard. It was hard to play. And it was very unsatisfying uh, for where I am with my skills. So that was the challenge stream. As for today, we go into the multiplayer stream um, where I learned a few things. So I learned about decorations here. At this point, I was starting to pick up uh, these decorations that I learned that you can slot into your gear, which I like. I'm not putting too much attention into that because I'm still learning about the higher rank gear and I'm getting more comfortable. So you remember last week, I was like, oh my God, higher rank, there's so much gear to look at. But now because you need so much materials to unlock higher rank gear, what I'm doing is I'm only focusing on the gear that's available. So I'll go out and I'll do hunts. And then I'll look, okay, what gear can I craft? And then I just compare that one-on-one -on -one with my stuff. And because I have so little high rank gear unlocked, it makes the whole process a lot easier of like, is this better than this? No. Is this better than this? No. We don't upgrade. Or if it is, we upgrade. So I'm not really worrying about what I look like right now. I'm just worrying about increasing my defense, picking the better skills out of them. And maybe one day as I get more, con as I get more comfortable, I'll actually look at the whole breadth of armor kind of will it down to the ones that I like and then go actively hunt the pieces for that armor which is probably going to happen in the next week and then we I did a lot more optional quests focusing on unlocking canteen and farming uh, aspects so I know some of you are saying oh his, his health seems low for where he's at in the game and that got me wondering like oh maybe I should focus on upgrading the canteen if that gives me more health and stamina so I learned that in the optional quest, the little bubbles, those give you items uh, that go there. I learned about the canteen menu and all the question marks. I'm like, ah, my completionist is satisfied here. I get to unlock all these things. I love it. So I'm really enjoying kind of doing those optional grinds. It's just really pleasant to go through. Uh, the farming less so. I really don't care about the farm. I thought it was going to visually grow more, but I get more satisfaction in the canteen. I think they could have done a better job at showing that progress of the canteen like it, it happens but sometimes i'm like what are we adding i'm not seeing what we're adding to the canteen it would have just been and there's that that menu that shows you all the ingredients but i feel it could have been more designed in a way that you know really causes that itch for completionness of like i need to complete this right now it doesn't quite hit it but i am enjoying filling that up uh we did quite a few event quests and chat got trolly again and so one of the first quests I did was an egg quest. So we did the wyvern egg and it was Sunday morning. So they were like, okay, we got our eggs. They're like, you gotta get your bacon, go in. Uh, so we did multiplayer and we went into this special arena event quest. And I was so against it. Cause I was like, I'm playing with three other people. I want a challenge. And like, I want to make sure the people who are joining me are having fun too. And they're like, go, go. I'm like, I don't want to fight four or five pigs. This is going to be a massacre it's gonna be dumb and they're all like trust us trust us i'm like okay chat i trust you so we go into the arena and i'm running and then i see the other like three people in my party right in the chat they're just like let him go first stay back and i'm like what what's going on and so the other three players in my team they just kind of held back at camp they send me into the arena and there's these massive pigs and i was like oh they're big pigs well that's fun and i jump in there and i start hacking at the pig and then one charges at me and I faint. I was like, what? It's one hit KO pigs. So that was the twist. They sent me into an arena of pig death, which was brutal. We got the whole party wiped because a few other players didn't know about it either. And the, the pigs like have a little bit of like, what do you call that? Um, 
drifts on them so they don't just run straight they also like kind of seek you out but we came back at it we killed all the pigs and i think because of that i got a cool like new cosmetic head thing so i i, I also unlocked a cat head i'm not sure i did that uh it was one of the event quests but i like that i'm unlocking these layered items which are completely cosmetic uh just to kind of spice it up i do like that aspect of multiplayer it's just silly fun time so now we're all caught up onto the new progression screen that happened this this past week a lot of new thing a lot of new monsters so last week th my my takeaway was i was a bit disappointed in the challenge of high rank i didn't really feel satisfied this week mm, i am i am full i just had a buffet i was pleasantly challenged throughout most the whole stream so let's get started we start with kieran so i unlocked kieran um over this past weekend took him on this week beautiful monster one of the most beautiful monsters like if i had to pick the most beautiful monster right now it's kieran he's just a magical beautiful crystal unicorn uh a little intimidating with the lightning he killed me pretty fast on the first one i think he stunned me and then like thunderbolted me and i just died and then i went in a little bit more cautiously and we kind of maneuvered it was low rank kieran by the way um and i ended up beating him but he was still pretty challenging even if i won it's not like haha this was easy no it was this was a good challenge i liked it then we uh went to anjanath and a, a high rank anjanath fight which felt um it felt like a good challenge but then the b52 bomber showed up i'm like okay i'm i'm understanding the theme of this thing this guy's gonna get in the way all the time and it was just a mess and the b52 bomber makes it way more scary and way more complicated than it needs to be so we got through that and then i came across i finally unlocked the questionable tracks we unlocked a pink rathian which was cool i guess that's a subspecies so i'm gonna have to learn about the lore of this but that fight also felt really good like i was using all the skills i had up to that point um i did not feel like i was like dominating this beast he was pretty much going toe to toe with me which is exactly the right level of challenge i want there was a, a Lagiana that showed up at Tsitsi, so we had like three monsters in an area at one point. I'm like, this is just ridiculous. This is just crazy. And I noticed my switch axe skills were really improving this week. Uh, I don't know what clicked, but something... I was using the sword mode a lot, and I hear a lot of you guys saying like, finally, he's using the sword. Um, a, because I noticed, yes, it is doing much more damage now. As much as I find it satisfying to swing the axe, I'm getting more into that craving of i need to deal out more damage now and i learned a few new moves with the sword just through like playing around with it so like there's one where you like slash slash jump slash and i was like oh this is really cool i like it it's very fluid and i started like chaining like one to two to three combos when a beast is down or something so like i'm getting a lot more comfortable with my switch axe enough that i'm like whoa this week i i leveled up like i felt that increase so the pink rathian went down on the first attempt i think i might have fainted once or so but good fight and then we unlocked a new region the elders recess which is a really good name for a for a retirement home um lots of new monsters here and i love it i hate the lava part of it but i love everything else about this zone so first we came across uh, a dodogama and the whole chat was against me killing it so we did a i kind of went middle ground and i captured it it's cute it's derpy doesn't mean it started a fight with me first so i'm like mm -mm -mm. if i don't care how cute you are you pick a fight with me we're gonna end it uh so it kind of reminded me of like a great jagras but cuter so yeah we we captured it and then there was uh the uragon the big chin thing just which is just hilarious its chin is so big it's comedic uh i did not fight it but i'm like you we're gonna come back to you um for some reason what was that oh we were looking for the pickle monster so that was kind of a theme here. We were all looking for the pickle because in the game it says, oh, this pickle monster, what was his name? Joe. Geo? Joe something. Something Joe. What was it? It was Joe. I forget. Devil Joe. Not Devil Ho, by the way. Not pronounced like the Spanish, but Devil Joe. Um, so yeah, it said Devil Joe is now available out in the wild. So everyone got excited and we started like looking for it. I, I ended up not finding it. But uh, in Elder's Recess, yeah, we saw the Uragon, we saw the Lava, Lavasiath, which is basically a fire fish monster. Really not looking forward to fighting that thing. And finally, we came across Nergigante, which is a terrifying beast. And I was not, 
expecting to fight it. I kind of went in. So at this point, I've kind of gone through since high rank, I haven't really grinded armor. So I'm I'm kind of weak right now. And I know that Nergigante is a formidable foe. So I went into the fight with, you know, let's just see what the gap in skill is, kind of like what I did with Anjanath the very first time. So I went in with all the armor I had, which is pretty low armor, honestly. And I went in with a pretty weak switch axe as well. I'm like, let's just see how far we, we get. And I was so close to beating Nergigante on my first attempt. It's probably good that I didn't because I would just be so cocky. All of you would unsubscribe. Um, but man, that fight was intense. The music that they pair with this thing is intense. It's stature. It's just this like massive beast and has the horns of Diablos, has the speed of Clifford. And I, I love that when I was fighting it, I was like, oh, I learned how to like deal with as this aspect when I fought Diablos. I learned how to fight with this aspect when I, I'm like, this monster is the combination of everything I've learned so far. And when I was having trouble like creating an opening, I'm like, oh, Rathalos taught me to use the, the flash bombs. So I was like using the flash bombs. I was literally using everything I knew on how to fight this thing but he hit hard. And again, this is probably more of an indication of my uh, armor being too low. Uh, every hit was like a quarter of my health and I got him to limp. I got him to his nest. He was sleeping. I woke him up and I was doing good and I really thought I was going to win, but I didn't know about the whole spike thing. And at one point he just dive bomb. I had full life and he just one hit KO'd me. And I was like, I just saw my whole career flash before my eyes. And I'm like, Oh, how am I going to deal with this? So, fantastic fight. This was a little bit less comfortable of a challenge. I'm not quite at the point where I can comfortably fight a Nergigante, which is perfect because I'm like, okay, the gap, I thought the gap was going to be like this, but the gap is like this. And I'm like, okay, now I, I just need to like polish off all these new moves I've been learning with the Switch Axe. I got to like get better positioning with this thing and up my armor and i'm pretty sure i can like i can see myself taking this thing down next week assuming i got all the armor pieces i want so nerdigante fantastic fight beautiful dragon terrifying music's terrifying everything's just scary about it um but yeah really looking for it it's not like diablos where i got destroyed it was really like oh i can take this on if i just tweak this and this and then finally uh we were we went back on the on the hunt for the pickle and we came across an Azure Rathian, I think it's called. And that thing destroyed me in like three hits. I was, I don't know if it's because I was tired at that point or if I was just completely outmatched, but it just went like, get out of here, noob. And there was no hope, no chance of me doing anything to this thing. So not really looking forward to that. But now I love that the world has opened up. Uh, I'm out of my comfort zone again. I'm like in the, in the perfect place of being outside of my comfort zone. I'm like, okay, I got I got room to grow now. I got new things to try. And I'm getting a lot more comfortable with the basics. You know, you guys said low rank is the tutorial. The tutorial. I feel that now. Um, I'm I'm less dealing with the the mechanics of the game, and now I'm like actually stepping into the my foundation and building on top of that. So just fantastic, fantastic week. Like the the fights of last week were just really great. And I can't do a um, grind stream this week, so it might slow down my progress because I can't get the armor to really progress. So on the next progression stream, we're probably gonna fight some monsters I've already fought or like maybe the big chin thing to, to kind of get some new armor. And then hopefully at the end of that, we can go back to Nergigante and say, see if I'm strong enough to beat it. But yeah, this has been just really fun. Like it picked up again, I'm in the happy zone and I hope we keep in that happy zone until I get to the end. And I have to say like, oh man, I love knocking off the optional quests and all that. I love having that completionist thing. I think I'm gonna do all the quests. I know I said we would do all until the credits roll in Monster Hunter World, but I wanna do all the quests as well. So add that to the list of my pledge. Oh, that's a lot of stuff, but uh, that was exciting. As usual, if you wanna see any of these streams and you don't use Twitch, I always put them in an unlisted playlist on YouTube, which you can find uh, as a comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you next week, and until then, keep it classy. Dear Journal, Today I saw the infamous pickle. It was so long and so big. I couldn't believe it. It was scary at first, but after a while, 
it seemed like I could actually do it. I could actually beat him. It was weird though. The longer I played with it, the harder it got. It got really weird when I got angry and turned all bulgy and red. I don't understand the hype around this pickle monster. Maybe it's because... And I'm gonna be blunt. It just looks like a big green di- Pidgey hunts. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter Journal. This is where I go through Monster Hunter World, my first Monster Hunter game for the first time and document my entire journey. If you're up for that, be sure to subscribe and like the video and follow along the story. This week, we had some big steps. We broke last week's wall. We took on some legends, but I have to say, because I didn't do my grind stream over the weekend, it feels like I didn't make as much progress as I usually do. So this week was a little bit of grinding for half the stream, and then we took on three new monsters this week. So I got uh, to fight Uragon, I got to fight um, Nigel once again, and we ran into the infamous Pickle, the Devil Joe, as everybody has been saying, ho ho ho, I can't wait until he fights Devil Joe. Well, I fought him, and I beat him. So how cocky should I be about this? But uh, I'm going to try to stay somewhat humble as best as I can. We're going to leave that towards the end. But let's get started with starting up. So last week, recap, we fought, we fought uh, Nergigante and we got, we being me, got destroyed. Um, it wasn't completely unexpected. In fact, I did a lot better than I thought because I was under uh, equipped. I went in with no preparation, no understanding what this monster was capable of. And I just did not have a really good armor set. So step one, uh, I also didn't have a really good switch axe. So step one is I went through all the armor and I took the time, I ignored defense, I looked at skills and I went through skills on stream of every kind of piece of armor and we wish listed the ideal piece of armor that I wanted. But basically when I had all that, we also picked a switch axe, something that I could grind out quick. So I know a lot of people are saying like, oh, get Rathalos this or um, Odo this. It was probably the better option, but honestly, I did not want to do a grind stream on a Thursday. And I knew that I am not at a point where I can grind Rathalos and all that <clears throat> very easily. So that's why I opted out for a lot of things that use the Great Jagras set. Because A, the skills and the switch axe of the Great Jagras are actually quite good for what I was looking in comparison. And B, I can grind out Great Jagras pretty quick. And in fact, we killed him so many times, uh, the Great Jagras is probably terrified of me when he sees me come into the forest. Uh, so we did a bunch of that. While we were grinding for the Great Jagras' uh, pieces, someone recommended, hey, while you're doing this, you might as well try another weapon just to have fun with it. And I was like, oh, I had a lot of fun in Monster Hunter Rise's second playthrough, which, preview alert, I'm going to have a second impression of why I will probably buy Monster Hunter Rise. That video is going to come out sometime uh, soon. Anyways, uh, in Monster Hunter Rise, I was really, uh, I found the longsword really cool. And especially after seeing someone play it that you can like sheath it and like pull it out. I was like, okay, this is samurai gameplay that I wanted the first time I played the demo. So I'm like, how does it play in world? So went into uh, a few great Jaggers fights with the longsword. And at first, yeah, it's unsatisfying when you don't know what to do. You're hitting Y and B, AKA the top button, the right button. And you're just like going boop, 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 or like poke, poke, poke. But then you start like using the, the trigger button and that's when you're starting to do like these whooshes and stuff. And that's really cool. I couldn't do a sheath, but I could do like the, the, the trigger and the B, which like steps back and then like does a huge like swooshing arc from, from like the side. Felt very Sephiroth like. That move and, and all of that felt fantastic. I love that stuff. Now, there was another move I, I was kind of like trying to do combos as I was going and there's one like I learned that you have to like fill the sword gauge and then you can unlock like some kind of like Bushido mode or something and there's a part where like you can just go like you, you like slice the air and there's like a resonation and then you can like jump and like bring down the sword again and it just creates like shockwave and destroys everything I'm like oh my goodness oh my goodness I think I love this um but then everyone's like don't don't do longsword. There's so many longsword streamers out there. Um, that didn't affect me as much as when I spoke to a, what do you call it? A, a wy Wyverian, like an old hermit cat thing. It's not a cat, it's a guy with long ears. Uh, and he, he, I was in the desert and I talked to him and he was like, uh, you are a switch axe user. That is the 10th most popular weapon. The most popular weapon is a longsword. I was like, oh, really? The longsword is what everybody likes to use? Okay, I'll stick with my, uh, you know, 
switch axe that no one seems to like. Oh, and they're like, the hunting horn is the worst of the weapons, is, is the least favorite of the weapons. I was like, well, we all knew that already. But I didn't know the switch axe ranked so low in the Monster Hunter World weapon guide. So that was a lot of the beginning of the stream, a lot of that grinding. Once I got some, some of uh, all of that armor kind of bumped up, we also got a bunch of orbs in them, so my defense went up. We went after our first new monster of the week, which was Uragon, a.k.a. Jay Leno, a.k.a. Big Chin. Um, this guy was... I forgot that he kind of had the, the uh, what do you call it, the, the bagel effect where like he drops the mines. So he was basically like the last rolling monster, but now he's dropping off bombs everywhere. And he like crouches and pulls out a hot sauna on you, which is really unappreciated because it hurts. So overall, it was a fun fight. I, li I like fighting big monsters. The bigger they are, the better. Except the pickle monster. He was too big. I, I couldn't do anything. He was just too high. So he was fun to fight. He got a little annoying at the end when he was just like constantly rolling. And I didn't know how to stop him from rolling. So I was just like, okay, run this way. No dodge. Okay, run. Uh, and then it was just like a matter of getting those final hits on him. That was kind of a, a pain to get. Um, but we did it. And then I was getting ready for my huge rematch with Nergigante. And everyone's like, no, go for the pickle, go for the pickle. And I was like, all right, if th this guy is such a big deal. Let's go for it. Let's go see what it is. And we pretty much narrowed it down to, okay, we're in the forest. There's an unknown monster that spawned there. It has to be him. So I went out and saw it. And I really, w I don't know. There was like, I have been hearing about Devil Joe since I think the very first journal I put out. So this one has had the most legend around, even more than the B, like it, it's up there with the B-52. So I was like, the B-52 kind of was a disappointment because I met it the wrong way. I was like, is this another case where I'm meeting the pickle the wrong way? And what is a pickle? I legit thought that the first time I would, whenever, when I started hearing about a pickle monster, I legit thought it was going to be like a small cactus sized monster disguised as a pickle that you're like, oh, it's cute. And then it just savages, rate, like destroys you. So I I mean, through through the weeks, I eventually caught wind that it was a long, slender green monster, but I hadn't seen it in game yet. So I went in there and I saw it at a distance and it was like, it just entered the forest. I was like, oh, that's a, that's a pretty big monster. Um, I see the pickle resemblance. I get why we call it a pickle. It's really long. And uh, I said that a lot of times during the stream. I just couldn't get over how long it was. Uh, so we had to fight in the forest. And I was expecting, again, another thing of like, this thing is completely out of my class. I'm forgetting that I'm... I think I'm like in the... I'm not in the end game, but like I'm in the later half of the game. So I don't think we're going to ever get to a point again where there's that gap of like when I met Anjanath for the first time and I didn't even know how to like use items and my weapon like that skill gap was massive so the first time i hit anjanath and i didn't know what to do that was terrifying so i'm always expecting that skill gap whenever i approach these leg legendary monsters uh and i was surprised that when he hit me it didn't do as much damage as i thought i was like okay i'm gonna start like smacking it around i was like hey it's been five minutes and i'm not dead and that's when like hunter mode engaged i was like I'm gonna kill the pickle. I'm gonna go for this. And like, just to tell you how unprepared I was, I went into that fight without eating because I'm like, I'm not gonna waste some food. I'm just gonna see what it is. I'm gonna poke it and then I'm gonna run away. But I was like, no, I think I have a chance here. And I just started like going after the pickle and I was learning to like lean towards them, which we learned from Diablos. And then he got like red and bulgy. And I was like, oh my God, the, the innuendos are just, there's so many of them. Like just lame people would make jokes about that at this point. like. It's just, it's just too easy. It's big, it's long, it's green, and it gets bulgy. Come on. Come on. So that mode was intimidating because now it was unappealing. It was clearly enraged, and it was just like being extra aggressive. It's so high and so tall, you can barely reach it. It just like jumps near you, and you're constantly stunned. I honestly don't know how I beat it. But I guess I've managed to dodge enough times and land enough hits. Um, I Oh, I had my new axe at this point. So my axe, my switch axe got a massive upgrade from the one I've been using for the last few weeks. So there was that. I was dealing more damage. I was, uh, I don't think I was using the switch axe properly. So last week I started using sword mode a lot more. Now I'm using sword mode too much. 
that apparently I was like uh, causing myself to have this like recharge thing happen. So now it's back to kind of finding that 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 delicate balance of switch and axe. And I think maybe the pickle monster was the first time I was like trying to find that balance. Anyways, it was it was a decent dance, but it didn't feel as triumphant as let's say Diablo or Anjanath. Then he was limping. I was like, can I capture this thing? And I'm like, trap. It was trapped. And I was just like do doing doing the uh, whatever the intoxication stuff. What is it? What's it called? Tranquilizers. And down he went. I was like, oh my god, I just captured the pickle. I, I, I fainted once, um, but I couldn't believe it. And last week, Gaijin Hunter came into the uh, came into the stream. He's like, ha ha ha, I am Gaijin Hunter. And I'm, I'm sure he does not sound like that. I know he watches these journals, so apologies. I'm not trying to mock you, but I'm, I'm trying to like say how great you are. So Ga Gaijin Hunter comes in and he's like, uh, if you face the pickle and if you com if you can actually beat him on your first try, I will give you a pickle trophy. And I was like, oh my god, a pickle trophy from Gaijin Hunter. I need that, please. Uh, so when we fought it and I actually captured it, I'm like, oh my god, Gaijin, Gaijin. And actually a lot of people in the streamers like went to Twitter and they're like, Gaijin, yo, yo, hey, Jay, uh, a pickle. And he came into the stream and he he, uh, he gifted me the pickle. Um, this is terrible. What is this pickle's name again? Devil Joe. He gifted me a Devil Joe. <laughs> statue unfortunately it only unlocks in iceborne so these are statues you can buy as dlc and you can put them in your room so i don't even know what it looks like but when i get into iceborne which i absolutely must now i will have my own gaijin hunter donated devil joe monster to commemorate one of my highlights and on this entire journey that is a highlight that is one of my greatest highlights that gaijin hunter came and not not that he just came and gave me a trophy but the fact that he came to acknowledge one of my greatest triumphs that totally happened by accident uh and and maybe some skill a little bit of skill so with that rush i'm like all right it's nerd gigante time and i just went in i was like we're going in and like i'm here like i just jumped into the fight right away with the same armor and everything that because i'm like this setup is good enough for pickle it's way good enough for nerd gigante and like the you know that like really like dark music starts up and i was like ah the, like last week was like oh no scary music this week it's like feed my soul with nerd gigante music as i destroy and pound him and i was like swinging and then he killed me i was like oh no last week was a fluke i'm not good enough and then i came back and then the spikes got dark i was like oh no the spikes of darkness i don't know how to stop them and then i i saw the dive bomb i actually know what the dive bomb is i'm like okay dodge but he was still hitting me but it wasn't hurting as much because i had the defense and uh it was just he was a lot faster than the pickle he was a lot more scary and intense than the pickle i think i had more fun with the with the nigel fight and then i saw if i was too far how he would like flex his wings and the spikes would grow i was like aha that's how i stop you i just have to be like on top of you to stop and then we like cut off the tail i was like yes success we actually did did things oh by the way my switch axe goes to blue now and it glows blue it's like a lightsaber it's really cool so just having that axe is just so much better anyway so we kept fighting it and then i've i killed it of course and but like destroying two monster gods in my like little monster into universe just felt amazing and i was like yes this is a rush let's let's go this is this is why we play this game uh and then the story progressed so now i know i'm set up to fight we got a track and we got to hunt down four other elder dragons because Nigel feasting over there scared everyone away and everyone's kind of rampaging and doing crazy stuff. And I'm like, this is this is the kind of story nudge I need. Hey, there are four Elder Dragons out there. You just fought one. You saw how terrifying it is. There are four more. They're out there. You have to find them and you have to kill them. Go have go have fun. That is that is all you need in a Monster Hunter, like an actual story. So I'm really excited to begin my hunt of the Elder Dragons. Um, I'm pretty happy and confident with the armor set i have so i don't feel like that's going to be a lot of a roadblock it's just a matter of finding them see observing them understanding how they move and then just getting good at killing them and and we can just go through this so we can get to our ultimate goal of rolling the credits and then we can go on to our second journey which will be iceborne i can feel it coming i can feel it coming it's getting close so it's uh it's been a wild ride the, the the there's a lot of highs i'm on a high right now and usually highs are kind of are followed by lows so we'll see what happens in the next coming weeks the great thing is i have no idea what the next monsters are nobody has really teased what's coming up i don't know anything about these other elder dragons i haven't seen them i don't know their names i don't even know what they look or feel like so i'm super excited to just take on some unknown monsters be scared and then fumble my way through a victory 
And that's my Monster Hunter journal for this week. Thanks for joining. I'll see you all on the next journal. And until then, keep it classy. Welcome everybody to the season one finale of Hey J Hunts, Pledge Complete. Come on, give me my boom. Boom! Hey J Hunts. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter journal. For those of you who have been following this journey since the beginning, what a wild ride it's been. It's been exactly 10 weeks since I've made a pledge to play through until I hit the credits of Monster Hunter World. And here we are wrapping up on journal number 10. I couldn't have asked for a better number to hit it, but it happened. I was not expecting it to happen, but this week I saw the credits, which means I've fulfilled my pledge. Now, before we get into the this week's progress, because this has been one of the most momentous streams I've ever done. I couldn't like get over just how much progress I was making. I killed the B-52 bomber, the basil goose. I've killed Kushala Do Daura, Daura, Tiastra. I'm bastardizing all these names. I apologize. Val Hazak, Zeno Jiva. I've slayed all of the end game of the story in Monster Hunter World. But before we get into my experience of hunting those monsters, I just want to share how, what it's like now that I've actually completed my pledge that I've done here. So when I made that pledge, I put a lot of thought into it before, if you've noticed the time between, I think the video where I said, whoa, the monster community is pretty good and you guys were giving me a lot of feedback. I was really hesitant to jump into this game because I did not think I would like it. And even though I could see myself playing through a game even I didn't like just to complete just for funsies to, to like really get it I was I was expecting to not enjoy this game and for this journey to be a little rough and instead it was a full 180 where I actually enjoyed it I discovered so many new experiences we've created so many memes and it's been such a wild journey I almost want to recap what I'm dubbing as season one because it is such an interesting story. I know a lot of you have referred to it as a as an anime arc uh, of my own journey, which I'm sure that's how it's perceived by you. But on my perspective, I'm seeing it with all of you coming to the channel, all of the stories that we're doing through Discord, through the Twitch uh, streams. Like there's so much that's happening, not just because of me, but because of all of you as a community. And I really want to just capture that as kind of like, this is one time frame, this is one slice, this is season one, because there are going to be more seasons and we're going to talk about that at the end of this video. But anyways, yeah, I was going into this expecting not to like it and it was it has been it has been one of my favorite, most iconic and best gaming experiences ever. Not because of the game, but because of the fact that there was this massive community that we could create stories with and I hope to do a lot more of those with all of you. So, let's get into this week's stream starting with so I, I was going into this week's stream where did we leave off last time last time i'm trying to remember i think last time yes last time i had finished uh Nergigante and it's like all right there are elder dragons everywhere go out and hunt them and uh i didn't have the the most upgraded switch axe that i wanted i still had ugly armor so i started the stream I'm like all right let's go farm at cc to get the last few claws i need to get my like higher uh great jagras switch axe so that i can take on these elder dragons and I did an expedition, uh, an investigation, which had him and Basil Goose in it. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. It's gonna be a good warm up. I have yet to actually kill Basil Goose. We had that first encounter with him, but I never actually killed them. I ran out of time. So in this setting, I understand he has a little bit less HP, but still on this map, I was fighting uh, Atsitsi, uh, Basil Goose and, uh, or Basil Juice, I don't know. And we had the Odo, which was actually, I don't know why he was on this map. It was the first time I saw him on this map. And it was kind of chaos because all three kept like fighting at the same time. And Basil Goose was just so massive and this map feels small. It's the map of the, um, I think it's called the Coral Highlands, but I could be wrong. Uh, and, but I love that Tsitsi could like flash the B-52 and then like he would get stunned and then I start beating on him and then Odo would come and like bite me. And it was like, it was just a crazy like melee of a hunter and three monsters all fighting for each other. Anyways, I killed them all. Um, the ba Basil Goose was actually kind of tough in this setting because I was like, there were so many things tr calling for my attention and it was just a slugfest. It was like a 3D version of Smash Brothers where I was just getting pwned everywhere. Um, but finally we slayed him and I could finally see what his armor looks like. Uh, it looks pretty good. I, I like, I like the armor set. 
Um, this is an armor I would definitely consider getting. And then with him out of the way, we had our new switch axe. We had, uh, we were ready to take on the next elder dragon. And the first one that unlocked for us was Kushala Daora. Um, and I have to say, I think this is my favorite elder dragon so far. It's it's a beautiful, beautifully designed like dragon. He it's got the like the steel body. Hate its tornadoes. So it's like this, this dragon that does the wind stuff, but it, uh, what's the word, projects its attack so clearly, I really had no troubles fighting it. The only thing that got in the way were its tornadoes, where sometimes it would be like behind a tornado in a like really cramped spot and I couldn't get to it. But throughout the whole fight, I felt challenged, but I also felt like I was in control of the fight. I got no, I didn't cart at all on this one and it was just a fun fight like I, I there was even a place where i had like some some toads i was trying to kick the toads to get the dragon uh down and i didn't have enough flash pods i was not using my flash pods effectively uh so basically i learned when it does the tornado it comes out of the tornado that's when you want to flash it bring it down uh, and then you can hack away at it but otherwise it was just a really fun dance with kushala kushala was my favorite of the, of the end game uh, way less intense than Nergigante. Nergigante is just so aggressive and so on you. I'm like just panicking all the time. But as a Switch Axe main, uh, Kushala, fantastic fight. Beautiful dragon. Love everything about it. The armor set for Kushala was all right. I was expecting something a little bit better that more resembled its like it, its own skin. Um, what we got was something that I'm just like, oh, okay. I don't really feel much out of this. Uh, next, the second Elder Dragon that I got to fight was uh, Tiostra. Uh, beautiful, again, beautiful lion. I love the face of Tiostra or Tiostra. And this fight, I think, was the most difficult, one of the most difficult Elder Dragon fights I had, um, barring Nergigante, which was like a new wall. Just the fact that I had to fight this thing around lava, I was constantly being burnt. I'm not proud of that armor set. Uh, keep in mind, I, I, I was trying to get through the base world well, I always play all my games quickly, so I'm, I wasn't about grinding and optimizing my armor. I would always go and fight a monster first, and then if I had issues, I would go back and refine my armor. In this case, uh, Tiostra, if I would have died to him a few more times, I definitely would have went back, grinded some fireproof armor to fight him, because it was just disgusting how often I was getting burnt. And he has this like supernova attack where I'm just, I didn't, the first time I'm literally standing there just like admiring its beauty, and then it just goes, boom, you fainted. And that was my that was my one and only cart with him. The rest of the time, he was just burning me constantly, and there was explosions happening all around me, and I was constantly getting like like just sent around into into the lava, and then he was like making craters happen. Um, that was a challenge that was a little bit uncomfortable. Like it was, I wasn't it wasn't a comfortable challenge like Kushala. So, not my favorite fight simply because I don't think I was prepared. I, if, if I had to go back and fight it, I would grind out probably a Rathalos armor set or a uh, set or uh, and then maybe the story would be a little different because this whole fire business was just BS the whole time, but that's on me. Uh, next is Valhazak, which was the third Elder Dragon of the night. And I couldn't believe like how quickly I was going through these Elder Dragons. I'm just, I was not expecting to knock out so many new massive monsters in one night. So it was like a, a really adrenaline filled night. Valhazak. Oh, the armor set first of Tiostra. Crimson armor, beautiful red. I love how it looks like. Uh, between the alpha and the beta set, I think the alpha, I just like the helmet set better. Uh, really like, it's regal. I want some parts of that maybe mixed with other armor sets because um, I really like that, like that rich red. So Valhazak. This is the only Elder Dragon we do not fight in the Elder Recess, at least, you know, in base world. And that frustrated me because the Rotten Vale is my least favorite level. I'm like, oh, why do I have to fight an Elder Dragon in the Rotten Vale? And on top of that, why do I have to fight this undead thing, which is like oozing fart gas out of itself. And if you get too close, it halves your health. It was, it was, so, it was the most bullshit gimmick ever. He wasn't even hard to fight. He projected his attacks really easily. He was easy to dodge and he was easy to land some blows in. What was hard was managing that health because when I was close, he'd fart and then I'd like lose half my health and then I had to null bury it and replenish my potion and managing my health was honestly what took 
uh, the most time in that fight, and it was just tedious and boring because of that. Now, afterwards, I've learned that there is an armor set that nullifies that Rotten Veil like effect. Um, I forget which one, but I, I saw it on stream. I was like, oh, that ability nullifies this. So if I would do this fight again, I would go back in with, again, different armor sets to nullify that. And I could probably do that fight a lot quicker and maybe it would be more enjoyable. But otherwise, just just a, a, a BS like mechanic in a BS level where like, uh, just I really don't like dying to gas. Like I do not like losing health to gas. It's just nothing about that feels good. So uh, with that out of the way, it was getting pretty late into the night. I'm like, okay, I'm, I've just made it through three Elder Dragons with the same armor set, same Switch X. I'm not upgrading anything. I'm not dropping parts. I'm not like doing anything. Uh, but everyone's like, you are one monster away from, um, from, from doing, from rolling credits. And I was like, okay, if I can end my journey, my, my first journey on journal entry 10, like that, that is just so poetic. It's beautiful. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Um, I did not like how they set up the final boss of the game just because it's like, oh, you're a great hunter. You just saved everyone. You just slayed everyone. We, we recognize you. Come with us to the secret thing, just you and I. And it's like after everything that we've gone through, the whole story has always set us up as we are like a tribe of hunters. It's all of us. We're all in this together. Yeah, let's go hunt stuff. You know, we all went after the Zor, this big thing. But now we're going after the source of energy with the Admiral. And it's just going to be me and him buddying up to go see what's going on here. It gave me a really uncomfortable feeling of, okay, why are we kind of like going off on our own without the whole commission? It kind of takes away this whole com camaraderie that it was trying to communicate. You know, the first scene of this game, you're on a boat cheering with, with friends and everything about being together and going to the new world to hunt. And now you're going to wrap it up with, hey, hey, come with me. And then it goes into like this, this like dark tunnel you get on like a little boat and the music is like really just small and creepy. And I'm like, mm, this doesn't like set me up for, for all of the, everything that you built up. Even the Zora fights were built up to be epic and exciting, even though the fight itself was kind of meh. So I did not like the setup for the final fight. I did like the introduction of Xeno Jiva. Uh, the fact that it's an egg from the source of all like this Elder Dragon energy. That's great when it blew out of there and you just like see this massive like blue eyes white dragon looking thing. I'm like, okay. This is endgame material. This is a boss. Like, I can get behind this. I love the size. I love the look of it. And the music was, like, slow and epic. Like, it, it made you feel like you were small. You are not the champion of the world, and, which is okay. But I think it could have, like, it's a two-stage fight. I feel in the second stage, they could have ramped it up. I, I Like, my favorite fight music was when I was fighting Odo in the Rotten Veil, vale, and I was like really like fighting for my life, and then like that music picked up into like that that really like amped up state. That is probably the best song moment in this game for me so far. So anyway, that fight I was hacking away. Um, I I learned that you could like get rid of its glowy parts if you smack them around enough, and it would get rid of the glow. I think if you ignore it enough, I think. This was the mechanic. If you let it glow too much, it goes supernova and it just starts blasting everything and destroying the ground. Uh, again, this fight, I was burning more than I would have liked. I was struggling. I was I was really unsure that I was going to fight it. I carded once uh, simply because I think I got caught in an explosion because I, I wasn't aware. I got smacked by its like Kamehameha into the face more times than I would have liked, which was just like so insulting. Uh, it was not a clean fight. Again, I would go back in here with some optimized gear, protect myself from some burning, uh, probably come out with a better axe, like something from Devil Joe or something. Um, beautiful fight, though. Beautiful fight. Way better than the Zora fight. Uh, and then, you know, we wrapped it up. Now, its armor is also kind of nice. I think it could have been better, but I do like the flowy blue things. I just wish it was designed more to my taste. Um, so those were the last monsters that brought us to the credit roll and man what a night it was uh again all these armor and weapons are cool but now i need to grind them because i want them but at the same time uh i'm 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 in this weird place now because there is end game world content there is iceborne waiting for me and there is rise which is a week away from launching and i'm just like how do i manage all this monster hunter 
So on the one hand, I want to do the end game challenges of, of world properly, but I don't want to grind out higher rank gear that I'm going to toss out immediately when I start Iceborne. So I'm still in trying to figure out how I'm going to do that. I have to do some research and maybe you guys can give me some help in the comments of, should I just buy Iceborne, get, get some like early master rank gear and then do the world end content? Should I just do it on uh, multiplayer mode? Cause I heard the world end content is best done in multiplayer. Um, I really need to figure out. I, have, I still have to take on Black Diablos. I have to go back and, and see what these tempered monsters are about. Cause I haven't fought any. So there's still a lot to do in world. I'm not going to I, I consider that kind of side content. I'm still going to do it and cover it in a journal, which is going to be like a, a season one bonus journal, if you will, or bonus journals. Um, but I'm eager to start Iceborne. And right now we're looking at probably starting Iceborne this coming Thursday, uh, just before Rise. We're going to start the season two of this Hunter journal with Iceborne. And because I can't decide to do Iceborne or Rise, you know what? I figured. Oh, let's get on this train. We're going to do both. <laughs> so we're going to do Monster Hunter Rise on Tuesdays and Monster Hunter Ice uh, World Iceborne on Thursdays. And we're going to see how that goes. If it's too much, I'm going to recalibrate. But this is how I'm going to do it. And that means we're going to have two journal entries going at the same time. I will be grinding Iceborne. I will not be grinding Rise. So my Rise progress is going to be much slower. And my Iceborne progress is going to be more similar to my base world so keep that in mind and i know that the whole community is going to be playing rise so i'm not like in a hurry to get through that content because we're all going to be discovering it together so i'm going to be taking more of my time with exploring it grinding that out uh and not being so focused on okay i gotta get to the next monster every week uh so the rise one is going to be a way more laid back approach to how i'm doing world uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the chat because the chat has ha has been on a journey as well. When we started this entire thing, um, you know, we launched, I think the first stream had like 700 viewers. It was crazy. And we've kind of like evened out to about 500 regulars now. And uh, the chat was very helpful in the beginning. But now there's been kind of this division of Twitch chat where you have those who are very eager to help or troll. I don't know. Uh, and they're actually giving me a lot of tips on how to how to beat a monster before I even see the monster or they're very eager to like share all information which a lot of people are considering spoilers and then there's the other side of the chat which is fighting that side of the chat to be like quiet quiet and honestly I don't really like seeing that division um, I think I think that there's a lot of ways people like to experience streamers and the fact that you know we got onto this journey together all excited uh, and everyone gets a different reaction out of these streams. Everyone just wants to have the best time, but now we're like clashing about different things. Um, I, The way that our mods came up with a solution is we have this emote only mode. And now you have the people who want to protect me from spoilers. Uh, before I go into a fight, they redeem their Twitch points to get emote only mode. So now when I go into like these really like challenging fights, all, I look at the Twitch chat and it's just like emotes of people like reacting with, with emotes and they can't really give me any pointers. Um, I have to say, just my own opinion, I know that as someone who is streaming this game, uh, I'm going to experience this game differently than if I was playing it alone. And I'm okay with that. I'm enjoying how I'm experiencing it. Uh, when it comes to spoilers at this part, if I'm about to go into a fight, I would rather not uh, know the whole mechanic of, oh, grab this, 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 because on the one hand, yes, it's going to make it easy for me to do the fight and to, and to not waste time. But I think it does take away a little bit of the experience of figuring out, oh, I really needed this to prepare. Um, so it makes it makes the journey a little bit smoother, which, you know, I've always been trying to avoid it to some degree. I really want as much authenticity as I can as a streamer. So just bear that in mind if you are watching me on Twitch. Uh, I'm always happy for like suggestions and things, but if I'm about to fight a monster, maybe just hold back on really like key things of, oh, grab this armor, grab this item, unless I ask for it specifically. But otherwise it's been a fun time with the chat and there's a lot of memes coming out of that chat and, and how things are reacting. Um, so it's just been awesome. So that's where we're at. We're at the end of this season. There's going to be a bit of content as I look to clean up Monster Hunter World uh, base to some degree, specifically look at the new challenges. But we're a week away from starting Iceborne. I'm so eager to try this because every Monster Hunter World fan I know talks really highly about Iceborne as being like, this is this is premium Monster Hunter content. It, 
apparently doesn't compare at all like World. And I'm really excited to start Rise alongside everyone and see what it's like to be in a community that is developing and we're all learning and experiencing this together. So the fact that now we're gonna have two journeys going, it's gonna be crazy. For those of you who, who don't watch Monster Hunter content here, I don't think you're watching this part of the video anymore, um, but it's my non-Monster Hunter streams are going to come back eventually. But for now, this is a Monster Hunter year. I mean, we got two new Monster Hunter games coming out this year. There's just, it's, it's the year to do it. So let's just do it. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you on season two of my Hunter Journals or Hey J Hunts. And until then, as always, keep it classy. Oh, and one more thing. I pledge to hunt every monster in Monster Hunter Rise and Iceborne. When it comes to crossovers, Capcom doesn't mess around. Bird up. Hey, she hunts. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter Journal. This is the last of season one, a little bit of an epilogue as I dive back into some of the end game content before we actually put Monster Hunter World properly behind us and we move forward into Iceborne. Now I know I know that I'm not doing this the same way a lot of you did between Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Iceborne because let's face it, you guys had a year to play it, to grind, to work your way up all of this stuff, working, um, fighting the, the arc tempered beasts and the tempered beasts. And that was pretty much, I think, just to kill time until Iceborne came out. I have the luxury of playing Iceborne now, so I decided let's go play the monster. Let's go fight the monsters I haven't fought yet. Let's just throw on the defender gear because I don't want to do three months of grinding just so I can experience it and get to the good stuff, which is in Iceborne, because we also have Rise to play. We got some Monster Hunter catching up to do here. So I did a lot of the post-game stuff, which included a heck of a lot of crossover events. I didn't really, I knew that from playing on the multi um, multiplayer streams, I knew that there was some crossover materials, but tackling it all at once made me realize just how much crossover is. And I don't think I recall a game that's handled crossovers with so many different IPs to this level, not counting Smash Brothers, because that's an exception. So the first thing I did, uh, if I recall correctly, is Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy crossover. I really liked how they did it. I like that it's how, how it's multi, um, kind of a multi-quest approach. You're going into the desert. There's cact... What do you call them? Cactuars? Is it Cactuars? You follow the Cactuars, and there's actually a Final Fantasy crystal there. Uh, and then Kulu, Kulu, we'll call him Kulu. Kulu, Kulu Yaku? Kulu. He tries to steal the crystal, and the more he's running around, then there's the Chocobo song, and he just keeps growing. Like all of this Final Fantasy was just punching me in the nostalgia, and being in a Monster Hunter world, I'm just like, what is going on? There's like, the wires are crossing, the beams are crossing. Turns out Giant Kulu was harder than I thought. Uh, I kind of took him a little lightly, but the bigger he got, the more pain he dealt out. And I think I carted once on him, which was a little embarrassing. But in the end, we got him and that triggered, that brought out the Moogle. Now we have the Moogle in our world, which is just all sorts of weirdness to me. And of course we got the Behemoth, but I did my council pledge that I did like, it wasn't a, it wasn't a pledge, it was a bet. So I, I I did a bet with the council, by the way, for those who don't know, it's time to talk about the council. So the council is this group of viewers who have assembled in Discord and have somehow assembled themselves and called themselves the council and now they live to, I'm not sure if they live to help me or to troll me or a little bit of both, but either ways, they live in the dark corners of the HeyJ Discord. So anyways, they made a bet with me after doing a presentation as to why they would go to war with me or something. And I said, look, if I can, if I can slay Behemoth naked, uh, I get ownership of the council and we're going to name it the Classy Council. And this is at a time when I was kind of going through all the monsters and nothing felt too hard. I'm like, hey, if I go naked, I just have to not get hit. I'm sure I can kill this thing by just dealing out enough damage. Little did I know about the fun that is Behemoth. So needless to say, that was painful to watch me uh, cart nine times in a row. 
Uh, and then finally, I'm like, all right, let's squat up. Let's get some armor. Let's kill the behemoth. And this thing is just terrifying. It's big as one of the most epic intro scenes as it like crashes into the elder's recess. And it's crazy. The tornadoes it's doing, the attacks, the swipes. In multiplayer, it wasn't so bad because now you could have someone distract the face, smack it on the face, interrupt the tornadoes. And all you have to do is really watch out for its meteor attack, which wiped me out, I think, twice anyways. So it was still a hard fight, but we got it. And I got to see the armor. The armor is really awesome. Um, it's, it's a high level of bullshit. Like the whole fact that you can have meteor. Now I heard that before, it sounds like they patched this. It sounds like meteor used to wipe you out wherever you were on the map, unless you were hiding behind a rock. Uh, there was one place I was like, running trying to catch up i saw he was casting meteor and i didn't have time to find a rock so i just avoided the area and i didn't die um so that sounds like it's mercy compared to the beginning of this whole crossover but either way it was really cool to see some final fantasy in my monster hunter world they did it really well the music was executed well the little like ui interface differences with the behemoth fight i assume it reflected final fantasy 14 from what i heard uh just done so well so well uh, the other, let's go to the other completely like really good crossover event, which is the Witcher three crossover, similar thing. I really, but very different approach. I like how they had such a unique approach to the crossover. So with the Witcher three, you have Geralt who shows up and there's like this little creature and there's, there's some mystery stuff going on in the woods and you have to go explore. And the fact that you can play as Geralt and you have like his fire attack. And I went in with just the base sword. So I, I learned it was a sword and shield uh, mechanic. And then there's like quests everywhere. Now I have not played Witcher 3, so I don't really have context for it. I saw the Witcher show on Netflix, loved it. Um, but the from, from the little bit that I saw, I'm just like, am I really gonna like Witcher 3? Because... Geralt talks to himself a lot. There's a lot of narration. There's a lot of voiceover. And I'm maybe I'm just not in an RPG mood these days, but I was just like, oh my God, this drags on for quite a while. But playing as Geralt himself felt really quick. I don't know if he was faster than the hunter, but he felt faster. Um, I really like the, the fire attack, despite the range being short. And uh, I like how there's this like little quest part where you can befriend a, pu a Puke Puke. And then he later comes back. If you free him, he comes back to help you with the Leshen fight. The Leshen, super creepy thing. I was a little bit scared of it at first. But once I observe its pattern and I'm like, oh, is this is this all to it? There's, there's just like a few patterns. Uh, it was pretty easy. And luckily, the Sword and Shield, I'm somewhat comfortable enough to do some, some basic combos with it. Uh, so I managed to get through the Leshen with no carts. The hardest part for me of that fight was when he would summon the little Jagresses because I'm so used to having my switch axe that can just like clear a mob in front of me. With the sword and shield, I had to be more precise in my positioning and I just didn't have that natural positioning with like the small mobs and they kept jumping on me and interrupting me and the Leshen would throw his branches at me. Um, I came really close to, to carding a few times, but in the end, I did it. Unfortunately, my Puke Puke died in the battle, so I did not unlock uh, the secret super item, which is, I don't know. Uh, we did not get all the quests. I don't think I will do it again unless I'm really itching to complete this thing. Um, I did unlock. Now my hunter can use the fire spell, which is cool. I'm not going to use it. I heard it sucks. But just want to say really well done in the crossover. Now there's uh, we did a few crossover events with the multiplayer. So I really wanted Classy to be able to don his Mega Man suit. So we did the Mega Man event quest, which is you, you like kill a little Odo and then you kill a big Odo. It was super easy to do. The music though was awesome. And I heard that if you do that quest with different in, uh, different weapons, you get a different song that plays during the battle, which is just so cool. That's such like such cool features. Uh, after that, there's the Devil May Cry. So I want to see like the Devil May Cry outfit. So we did that. Uh, that too was kind of not that special. You just fought all the red beasts, but the outfit looked good. I think there was a special Devil May Cry music, but I haven't played that franchise. So I can't really speak much to it. And then we did um, some of these post-game creatures, including Lunastra. Oh, Lunastra. I thought I hated Tiastra, but Lunastra is a whole, whole different thing. So out of all of the Elder Dragons that I have fought, Tiastra is my least favorite. 
he's first of all he's in a fire pit he does all this fire stuff i just hate it i was always on fire i was always getting tripped now when you fight the lunastra at least you go and fight the tiostra in the desert so you remove that element of being in a volcano a volcanic atmosphere that made the fight a lot more enjoyable to me but then lunastra she not just has fire but she has the wind that blows the fire and she's fast and she has a longer tail and she is nasty she's just nasty she's no she's so nasty like nigel's even like i'm gtfo like nigel didn't even want to deal with her i did not like this fight it was really hard i did not manage to do it solo i did not have the patience to do it solo so we brought in multiplayer and uh as as a multiplayer group it was a lot more manageable um and then we, we killed it again for a few more things. So I, I finally got the Temporal Mantle, I think is what it's called, uh, which has been pretty useful so far. But man, I do not like Lunastra. Like, it's just not fun. I just don't enjoy fighting that thing. So I don't want to fight it ever again. But I probably will have to in Iceborne, I think. Then uh, I finally, I did want to try a Tempered Monster. And we decided um, at this point, I was doing multiplayer and I unlocked the double B-52 Bomber quest with uh, basil goose and they were both tempered or arc tempered i'm not sure what the proper terminology is probably tempered so i'm like all right let's try a tempered monster as a group they really didn't offer much of a challenge we managed to fight them separately for the most part uh they didn't get to team up too often and it didn't really feel like a harder fight keep in mind there was three other people helping me three other experienced hunters but it was just it didn't even feel like there was more health oh when you have two in a map i learned that uh, their health is lowered, so maybe that that was why. Um, but yeah, it wasn't anything too, too... Nothing that I'd be too crazy about. Now, I recognize there's a lot of challenge to this game that I'm skipping out on. The Tempered and the Arc Tempered Monsters. I could definitely go for them, but I feel it would be more of a frustrating kind of challenge than a fun challenge for my playstyle. It would be the same fights I've done with more HP, a little bit more aggression, and some new moves. And for some of those, I just... I. I'm not, I don't want to do that right now. So I'd rather jump into Iceborne and experience all the new stuff there. And Iceborne, I'm going to take my time with because, you know, with Monster Hunter World, I knew that at the end, I would skip to Iceborne. I would jump over to Iceborne. Now with Iceborne ahead of me, I'm not looking to jump into anything because I'm doing Iceborne and Rise at the same time. So I don't feel a rush to like get to anything. And also Monster Hunter World, I'd only pledged to get to the credits. Now with Iceborne, I said, I will fight everything. It's a whole different pledge. Uh, and I'm also like, if this takes me a year, I'm cool with that. I'm just taking my time. I'm enjoying it. I've already started uh, my season two, my Iceborne journey before filming this. And I can't wait to share with you my impressions of Iceborne because, oh boy, what a fun first stream that was. Now I want to take a moment to really process this whole journey and I'm not I'm, I'm going to try to keep it short. The last 10 weeks of Monster Hunter World has been an incredible journey and I can't imagine like I'm I'm so happy I did this and I'm so happy you guys came along because this has been such a fun journey. I went into this uh with that expectation of I was not going to like this game and it was going to be a grind to get through and it turns out it, tr it turned into like this great experience, this great story arc with really like high moments when it came to either the memes, fighting Anjanath for the first time, dying to Anjanath for the first time, that was a highlight. The whole like Diablos arc was cool and just kind of hitting those key beats of the monsters. Uh, the first time I came into, uh, hit up the B-52, Devil Joe, the Elder Dragons, Nigel, like all these things where it was, it feels like it was such a journey. And in the end, after all of that, uh, I did want to share the last statistics from season one. So when it comes to monsters slayed, assuming I, I was keeping track of counts right, 63 monsters slayed throughout this season and 29 monsters captured. Now, I, that seems like a low number. That's about 100, close to just under 100 monsters, um, just under 100 monsters hunted in total. And I think I played for 50 to 60 hours. So whatever that works out to for monsters per hour. In terms of failed quests, I was really expecting this counter to be higher. We ended up with six failed quests, um, Diablos being one of them. And I think some of the events one are the ones that uh, bumped that number up. Forgot to eat was only eight. I didn't know what eating was in Monster Hunter when I put that counter up. All these counters were recommended to me by uh, the audience. 
I'm glad I did not forget teeth that much. And honestly, I don't see myself forgetting teeth that much. I'm surprised that number actually ended up being that. Faints, 46. That number shot up so much towards the end game. Uh, there's so many BS quests that really launched that up there, like fucking Behemoth. Um, that's a number that's in line with what I expected going into this, but I didn't realize it was going to be so... <laughs> Uh, impacted by the end game stuff. I thought I was going to faint a little bit more in the earlier parts. And then when we started this season, we started with the handler cringe, which was a recommendation from the community. And turns out the handler is not cringy. Handler is not cringy. Meowscular chef is more cringy than the handler. And above all of that, standing at the top of Mount Cringe is me. So we had to change the counter to Hey J Cringe. And we ended up with about 11 Hey J Cringes since I implemented that counter, which was halfway through the season. Now it's gonna go way higher than that in Iceborne. Um, 11 are some rookie numbers. I'm gonna be tossing that up. But uh, that's where we are. We're gonna be resetting the counter for season two. So let's see how that's gonna compare when we finish those up. I think all the numbers are gonna be much, much higher. So I'll see you on, this, on the first journal in season two of Iceborne. And until then, keep it classy. Thank you so much for watching this first series of journals along with me. And don't forget, like the video, subscribe, and we're gonna keep doing these Monster Hunter journeys. Take care. Hey, hey, do you hear that? Is it the wind? No, that's not it. Is that?
I pledge to hunt every monster in Monster Hunter Rise and Iceborne. <laughs>